to what is up Pimps? it's friday may 20th uh louder can you go more yeah thank you yeah more maybe can you do a little more enthusiasm dan <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You guys see how hyped we are this Friday, May 20th? It's after dark. Man, it is Wednesday. And, you know, it, no, it's not Wednesday. <laughs> why does he always say that? It's Wait, it's definitely Wednesday? Friday. Oh, that's why I was so hyped. Hey, Fre hey, uh, hey Fresh, what's today? <laughs> Good one, man. I know we ain't got another one, man. What, what, are you, what are you going with the difference between them? I, know. <laughs> I can never understand what that guy's saying. Fresh, I ask, what day is it? Go oh, pretty it up and then load up Coleman's hair all went off to the side, man. I'm going to act like this, like, get my that good side, man. Just, you can't pretty talk. sissy dad like that. Not. Is that real? Yeah, that's what he's... No, fresh, what day is it? Man, it is Wednesday, man. Our... It's not Wednesday, dude. It's Friday. That dick with a boom, man. That old cow, cow fly all over. All right. Well, today's episode is sponsored by uh, HelloFresh. Thank you. And at the top of the show, I want to give a quick shout out to my beautiful wives, a wonderful company, mm. TeddyFresh.com. Hit me with that fashion music. Look at AB. He's rocking that Rick and Morty long sleeve tee, officially licensed in collaboration. A, 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 work it, work it. Sam is enjoying the, what is that one called, Eva? Mock neck, <coughs> color block, stripe. Mock neck, mm, something, something. color block, schmutz and <clears throat> Sam is looking good. Lena is looking amazing in her, what is that one called, Eel? It's called something, something, now, Teddy I, Fresh. I particularly, I think this shirt is beautiful. Uh, it looks amazing. How does it feel, Lena? It's a good one, right? Yeah, she's. She says great. She says it's great. You're muted. Oh, it's great. I love it. Very he loves it. You hear that? Off. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. And of course, I'm wearing this. I don't even know if this is in stock still. It's old, kind of old one. Um, you you want to plug anything, Ela? I'm wearing unreleased, simple. Unreleased? And oh, then really? my old Shredder and Alfredo shirt. Okay, represent. Is anyone else rocking Teddy Fresh this uh, beautiful day? Uh, I've got one that's yeah. a little older. <clears throat> Let's see it. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful piece. Oh, yeah. I think that one's still on, on the website. The floral Teddy Fresh mm -hmm. design. We love it. We love to see it. Guys, if you're in the market for some clothing, go on over to TeddyFresh.com. There's this and way more cool stuff. So thank you, thank you. We actually, yeah. we have a really amazing show planned today. We're having a call in. I'm actually really excited about this. Um, a gentleman by the name of uh, Jackson Palmer. Now, this guy is the creator of Dogecoin. So this guy's kind of a big deal. But what's interesting about Jackson Palmer is that he now hates cryptocurrency. He thinks he, he loathes it. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's super smart, super insightful. And I think it's going to be real interesting to hear from from Jackson a little bit later on round two. Um, that's exciting. Uh, lots to talk about as well, um, including oh members up for members. Thank you all the wonderful members. There's a new mm -hmm. BTS after the show. That's how it works, right? Uh, usually, this one is going to be tomorrow. Sorry guys, but it's a lot of footage it's from the whole. Crew. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> let's see what top of the show we got for you guys. We have the uh, H3 couples face merge. Wow, I haven't seen this. Oh, the couples face merge. So this oh, is... No, I hate those. Wait, no, look at it, Hila. No. Yo, it looks like Mizkif. <laughs> it kind of does. Doesn't it look like Mizkif, love? <laughs> Back me up, I know you... Yeah, <laughs> I, I think like three Stop. of these kind of looks like Mizkif. Honestly. Yeah. They all oh, end up looking like him? Funny. Yeah. It's because it's the eyebrows. He has beautiful eyebrows or something. And, and the eyes too. And yeah, yeah. The, yeah, and beautiful eyes apparently. So mm -hmm. there you go. Um, a handsome, uh, kind of a strange thing, but hey. 
<laughs> Let's see who's next. This is Dan. Oh my oh goodness. My. Now this, I, I don't know what happened here, but crazy. you guys turn into like I'm a sorry. seven year old late woman. Yeah. <laughs> this is Allison <laughs> and Dan. Wow. Just take that in, huh? <laughs> Golly. That is awful. You guys look like, and, I, and I'm just saying this with peace and love. You guys look like, uh, I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> Let's just move on. Today's one of the days where I'm gonna just do the right thing. And oh, thank it. you. I love those days. Yeah, yeah. Let's just move right past that. Um, Whoa. what? Who's this beautiful son of a gun? <laughs> Sam and Ian definitely look the best. Whoa. You look like a, a kind pop of like star, a, dude. Like a genderless beauty. Yeah. I like legs and uh, ass. So wait, <laughs> it, you kind of look like yourself, Ian, with just nicer skin and beautiful eyes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, he looks yassified. Yeah, yeah, yassified for I was, sure. I was samified. Samified, <laughs> even better. What a beautiful comp. What a beautiful features. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Love this. Love that. Um, next up, we have There's Chantel and Zach. That's a real person, dude. That's just a real person. What the heck? It's Ms. Oh, I feel like that's somebody I would probably know. He's like Israeli. Israel. Yeah. yeah, he's Israeli for sure. <laughs> what the hell? That one's so crazy. Yeah, it's, good. it's studly. You know, look good. Yeah, look yeah. fantastic. Damn. Okay, shout out. You guys are... Uh, this <laughs> one did not turn out good. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> DNA and AB. Oh, um, what? What the? What happened here? I, I don't know. Lena has a very small <laughs> nose that looks beautiful on her, but not so much on me. <laughs> is that what it is? The nose came up and just it just doesn't fit I, there. That's all I could focus on. I don't know. Hmm. What happened? You're not the heartthrob anymore, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. I would say, uh, oh, th is there more? Yeah, there's more. My favorite one's next. Yeah, Whoa, one. is that Cam in love? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's interesting. That is interesting. That is also somebody I probably know from Israel. Wow. Do you see how there's two different eyes? I think it took one on my mm. eyes and one on. Cam's what an interesting eyes. fellow you guys created. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. So, oh, there's more. Wait, who's this? That's Olivia and Pete Davidson. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Something went wrong here. Olivia. <laughs> the mouth, Pete's mouth. Something went terribly wrong. Uh, Olivia's back next week, by the way. Epic. Shout out to uh, Zoom Zons on the subreddit for that one. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Um, yo, we have a new horrible pitch. Oh, let's watch. Um, you guys, we, we talked to Brett. You want me to wait? There's been uh, okay. something weird with the audio. If you, uh, did you guys fix it? Okay, There's something cool. up with the audio? Oh, is that what you, is it's it all good? Uh, there we are. Hey, Gabe, Woo. what's going on, buddy? You taking a walk? Woo. Happy Friday. Happy, it's Thursday. Thursday? No, it's Friday. Psych. Oh, got me. <laughs> got you really got, got me. Good, dude. <laughs> what? I was like, what? I was looking at my phone. I was like, hold on. You got me, dude. You taking a jog? Take a little jog. Okay. Huh. What am I daily workouts? You do daily this daily? <laughs> daily walk. That ain't That's no walk. Cat. That's a you're just running, dude. <laughs> Woo, baby. Ow. 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 It's Friday. I wanna be a macho macho man. Hey, I wanna, I wanna be, be a macho, a macho man. Man. Woo. Macho macho man. man. I wanna, I wanna be, be a, a macho, macho man. Ow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Fuck yeah. Fuck, baby, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Little overcast, huh? It's cloudy. Oh, cloudy. Yeah. What they call it? May gray. Oh, do they call oh, it May gray? Yeah. About May gray. Uh, do you like the overcast weather or you prefer just sunny? Well, I, I say sunny. Overcast is sunny. It feels like you're in a natural air condition. That's good, ooh. right? <laughs> I don't think about humidity or stickiness. Ow! 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 
Friday, baby. Ooh, wow. Friday, baby. Ooh. What you doing this weekend? Well, we'll probably have dinner with a couple of friends and have a smoke. Oh, what are you smoking? And maybe barbecue. You doing 420? Maybe acid. Wait, what? Wait, back <laughs> it up. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> So you're doing 420, and you said you're dropping acid? <laughs> no, acid. You know, the cigar brand, acid. Oh, acid, oh Jesus. Thing. I don't know oh, that. Like Gabe. Yeah. Gabe is expanding his mind this weekend. <laughs> yeah. It may not be the same Gabe Ooh. next week. <laughs> Have you ever dropped acid, Gabe? No, I haven't. <laughs> no. You okay. Acid's a brand name on the cigar. It's, I see that. You don't feel that. It's a little that. confusing. Cigar. It's like they're yeah. like flavored uh, cigars. Yeah. Uh, flavored flavored cigar. what? Yeah. Like acid flavor? No, no, no. Like they have no. like a <laughs> like a Christmas flavored one or like a. What is it called? Like acid. Gabe, would you ever try acid? Have you ever been curious to try nah, it? No. No. Are you I doing this try weekend? It. <laughs> yeah. Dinner, barbecue. There may be no more Friday concept when you try it. Yeah, you you <laughs> when you try acid, you learn that the days of the week are arbitrary. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, we don't we we don't like that. Oh, nah. <laughs> 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 that's true. That'd be nightmare. Yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah. we don't want that for Gabe. Yeah. Oh, oh, Friday. All right, Gabe, you have a Friday, good weekend, baby. okay, buddy? Yeah, have a good one. Ooh. All right, love you. You take care. You have love fun. You. All right, love you. Yeah, next Take week, care. Fuck, baby. Fuck yeah. Fuck, Woo. baby. All right, love you. Love you. All right, love you, buddy. I love you. All right, love you. Love you more. Love you more. You didn't say it back. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Say it back. Okay. It back. <laughs> I said it back. You got it. It's so good. Oh, oh, oh. Friday. All right. Friday. Take care, buddy. <laughs> Take care. All right. <laughs> Love you. Love you. <laughs> that was nice. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to hear from Mark <laughs> Plug Gabe. Um, on Cameo, you guys, if you want uh, a shout out, of course, you can find him there. Speaking of Cameos, um, you know, we've been talking about AB's boxing match quite a bit. Mm. Hundar, his opponent, uh, bought. Let's see. So Hundar, here I'll just read his text. He said, "I totally forgot, but I bought this cameo because I thought it'd be funny with the memes." This is the guy who says, "If he they, if he dies, he dies." From Rocky. Yeah, the Russian. Uh. Rocky if he dies, he dies. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. Okay. But I think he got confused, and he thought I was supposed to be encouraging AB. He said my coach would have killed me if I sent this before the fight. So here is the he dies, he dies guy sending actually words of encouragement to AB. A little bit of a backfire. Legendary. <laughs> a message for AB from myself, <laughs> from Brett. So look, man, you're fighting this guy in a boxing what a voice. charity event, and uh, he says... Kind of like Trump. They say... Trump? Yeah, he's got this like... <laughs> they say you're fighting this guy. Uh, no. I don't know. I, I, I don't know much about him. He sounds like a real shallow guy. I don't know. He sounds to me like a character from Batman. Yeah, he basically he's a, is. He's a Swedish legend. Oh, oh really? Dolph, yeah. Yeah, mm. Dolph Lundgren. Dark Flungang. <laughs> Dolph. Dark. <laughs> Dolph. Yeah, Darth. Darth Flungang. <laughs> the, the greatest Sith of all. Yeah. Dark struggle. <laughs> too scrawny and too weak. He says, if you die, you die. But I tell you, kick his ass or I must break you. All right, AB. All right. Have a great fight. Good luck. And you will win. Don't worry. <laughs> You will break him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Legendary. Wait, so I don't understand why they didn't send it. Because he's encouraging AB. Yeah. Well, why did he, he, he didn't want to send it opponent. before. Why did he buy it then? <laughs> well, he got it to talk shit. Oh, and he ended up encouraging? That they would oh. pay us when they die because he killed one of the main characters in Rocky. So uh. thing, yeah, so he didn't want to send it beforehand. Dude, Cameo is so awesome. Like, you can turn, like, a meme into a whole career. Like, he's famous for just being, like... If he dies, he dies. And now he's on Cameo doing yeah. that all day. Yeah. Great. It's, it's kind of like um, correcting society because all these people... They deserve it. Deserve it. Right. <laughs> That's a good point, you know. Why, you should be able to cash in on that. Yeah. 
If he dies, he dies. I wonder if he would just do that for like a minute straight. If he dies, <laughs> he dies. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. I actually <laughs> ordered a cameo from him for my dad years ago. <laughs> he said everything I asked for, like word for word. So legend. He's an expert. How much was it? I think it was three hundred. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. You, you paid that Me for a cameo? Split it, 100 each. Ooh. My dad used to when he was younger, so we thought he might like it. Ooh. So I love for terrible first pitches, and apparently there's a new one. This is funny because we were just talking about this guy. I know. And how he's everywhere. And yep. I was like, who is this guy? And he, now here he's back. Steve uh, Aoki. Steve Aoki. Uh, Zach, I was hoping to see I, what he was going to do. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's see, man. There, there's a lot of bad first pitches, so let's see how bad is this one. A wind up? Oh, my God. Whoa! Wait, what? Oh. What's happening? Something with the audio has been happening. Is my audio crazy right now? Audio's fixed. Now, uh, oh, no, something else? Yeah. Oh, shit. Shit. Oh, the video? Okay. okay. The video? You good? Okay, so, yeah, here it is. Dude, what the heck was that, man? I just say, like, if you don't know how to throw a ball, don't get out there, dude. Or do a little practice. You know, right. I talked a lot. I've <clears> talked <throat> about... This? He's a DJ, apparently. Exactly. Good okay. question. Now, I've talked shit about these first pitches before, and you all made me show you that I have credentials. You remember that? Yes. Yeah, me, uh, yeah, don't question me. That. Just the other day, yeah. we talked about the fact that we were genuinely impressed by your uh -huh. uh, by your arm. Thank you guys very much. I threw us. I threw up right down the center. I remember. Oh, you do. Mm -mm. So don't question my my authority on this. I don't think anybody did. Well, that, I'm sure they're there. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, it's. But a what's the problem? I don't understand. Isn't it just for the gig, ga gaff and goof? And shits and giggles? No, yeah, but you don't want to be like, dude, when you throw a bad first pitch, you live forever in infamy. You get goofed on forever. This is baseball, the ceremony. But first do you pitch really? Dude. This is a compilation. Yes, Gary's first pitch from the Howard Stern I have show, heard about that people one. People on ESPN have been making fun of him for decades. <laughs> They, yeah. They were talking about this one on Howard, but there was a, a list and Gary's is still number one. Gary's is number one. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just but, saying, okay, you don't want to be this, on that list. For this DJ, is anybody going to talk about that? Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. I mean, that, was, that wasn't that was as bad as Gary's. It was wild. What did he do? Was He just threw it as hard as he could, like up? Yeah. Like, the throw doesn't make any sense. He threw it into the stand. <laughs> right. That was a weird <laughs> one, dude. Ugh. But okay, shout out, you know. Again, let's just look at Baba Booey's uh, pitch just to see, show you guys. But it's <laughs> embarrassing, dude. There's like tens of thousand people watching. You you better just, you know, you got a weirdo, bro. You just gotta get out. And the thing is, if you per throw a perfect pitch, dude, you get street cred forever. Mm. And that's that's all I'm saying. Like, just practice a few times. Mm -hmm. Right? How hard is that? Just saying. I sent you a multi-cam angle of Just Gary. Saying. Oh yeah, I need I need more angles of this. Thank you. Yeah, I need a multi-cam this. Oh, this is Baba Booey's? Of uh, Baba Booey's, yeah. Yeah, so so this is Gar this is what's held to be the worst ceremonial pitch of all time. This is the <laughs> producer from the Howard Stern show, who's a huge uh, baseball fan. And he even got a coach and practiced, he said. <laughs> he practiced. Look at that dude. Wait, I missed it. <laughs> and he's like a huge, he's a huge baseball fan. So this was like, he was having nightmares about this. I'm a big Mets fan, Buff. <laughs> and then the watch, Mets. watch how embarrassed he is after he throws it. He, look at him. He just puts his head in shame. He's like, oh, <laughs> I'm just going to be made fun of forever. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, seeing it now, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Like, I think Steve Aoki <laughs> was worse. I think Steve's was worse. Yeah. 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 Wait, there was one we saw that was like way worse. Who was a celebrity? D was it DJ Khaled or some hip hop? It's Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent. Oh, 50, <coughs> Fifty Cent. Yeah. Yeah. I love these. Yeah, that's more on par with Steve Aoki's. Fifty Cent's pitch was nuts, dude. Um, Didn't Fauci throw a wild one too? <laughs> was that recently? Did he throw a wild one? Or. Um, he, he Dude, heard. what the heck? Okay, here we go. <laughs> and you gotta love how he winds up too. Like he he's he's like, all right, we're gonna put the ball back here. I'm gonna throw a nice speeder down the straight. 
boom, dude. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'm just saying, dude. That's embarrassing. Just saying. Just saying. You know, they're laughing through the pain, let's be honest. But okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just an honor either way. That's what I'm thinking. You guys think it's an honor either way, or is this just a... Fauci? Okay, now... You know what I wonder? I wonder if your dad kind of, like, interfered with your point of view about this to take it too seriously. You know, your dad with the bitch balls. Am I am I off base here? This this is you don't want to go through a horrible pitch here, right? <laughs> I, I'm I don't watch baseball, so I'm kind of with Ela. Like if I if like personally if I fucked up, I'd be like, oh, whatever. Yeah, you don't want to uh, be in that hall of fame. No, you do not want to be in that. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. I mean, there's not, not an just... expectation for it to be like a fastball down the center or <laughs> anything right. at all. I mean, just just a gentle lob, you know. Yeah, no, you just want to get fine. it to the within catching zone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, Steve's. Uh, uh, I'm kind of inclined to say that's the worst one because we. I remember it we. Does look like the worst one. We reviewed these a couple months ago, yeah. and the and the audience had suggested, uh, you know, some people that had done well and done poor, and yeah. I don't remember any being like he that. Was almost nuts. threw it into the, like, the balcony nuts. seats. Yeah, <laughs> that was nuts. Well, here's Fauci, by the way, and dude, I'm sorry, but I've heard lots of conspiracies about this guy, but after, no, <laughs> it's all true. <laughs> this guy's a fake American. Fauci is a he's a threat to our to our democracy. Yep. <laughs> Maybe I'm off base, but I just think that I don't you can think never you're off base. From that. You can never recover from that. I think it's just you either uh, know it or don't. Kind of like. Yeah, you got to move to Canada after that. I think it's a, P- <laughs> a PR nightmare if it does. Uh, <coughs> Canadian teams and MLB. I see a few people saying they're they're with you on this. Thank you. You see, it's not just me. It's not just me. Yeah. I was fan just wondering, did Gary, like, brain you, I get brainwash it. you a little no, bit? No, I get it. That's a, that's a fair thing to wonder. Yeah. Could be. But uh, baseball's the American pastime. You gotta throw a ball. Sure. You gotta learn how to throw a ball. You think we could orchestrate getting your dad a first pitch, an honorary first pitch? Pff, that would be insane. For that? <laughs> he, would go, he would lose his mind for Dude, that. Dude, that would be insane <laughs> if we could do that. Hmm. He'd probably throw a terrible one too. No, it'd be such good content for the show. <laughs> Wait, how could well Dodge, so I don't know because oh Jenna Marbles got one. See if yeah, Jenna Marbles she did get a, good, I remember. We yeah, watched it. Yeah, we watched it and she her like pitch was best. solid. Oh yeah. yeah. See, that's so cool, right? Yeah. That's so cool. He's so cool. I think maybe she played softball or something. I could yeah. be wrong, but look at that. That's a clean one, dude. That's a clean pitch. Makes it look easy. Yeah, she did make it look easy. That was impressive. Didn't Carly Ray Jepsen have a bad one too? I'm like vaguely who? remembering. Carly Lee who now? Carly Ray Jepsen. She sang that song Call Me Baby. We could try <laughs> maybe we could try you know what would be the best, Dan, is if uh I went out there with my dad. Because I don't think they're gonna let my dad throw like at Dodger Stadium. Like who, who where can we find some weird off brand? Uh, Oakland like, A's. Like yeah. minor <laughs> uh, Can we find Oakland. some minor league? Some, like, some university fans? Do, it has do we Dodgers. have fans it, that it can... Bleeds Dodger blue. Like, it, no, my it, dad's a diehard Dodger fan, yeah. but they're not going to let my dad. Who's that? They just, it's like a they're make-away. not going to even let us do it. games do they play here? I, they, we can reach out and see. I mean. They might let me, maybe, right. in which I'd have to bring my dad out there right. and then do like a switcheroo. <laughs> He'd be proud. <laughs> <laughs> we can reach out and see. And let's see. Let's, let's see. Yeah. Maybe we could just make up a story about how we just turn it into like a make a wish thing. <laughs> 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 just saying, like that's kind of the only way we're gonna make this. Work. Oh my god! You know. <clears throat> Jesus. Hey. Uh, and in the role of a lifetime. In the role of a lifetime. Wait. So I gotta uh, try since I'm American now. I never yeah. tried. You never thrown a ball? No. Should we set it up? You want to do it now? No, no. No, no. <laughs> That's very American. If not now, when? If not now, when? If not you, then who? In a Look. few weeks. <laughs> okay. We'll hold you to that. Next Wait, Friday. Wait, in a few weeks? Hold on. Because <laughs> you don't want to throw a bad pitch. It would be embarrassing, right? Uh... Weren't you just saying? <laughs> Wait, that's true. I literally never even out. held a ball you to throw that in right my head. You were you just saying to throw it wasn't that Set it up. Set it up. Oh my god. All right, <laughs> Ela's about to. Uh, she's about to throw the okay, honorary whatever. first pitch of the Set Friday it. episode. Take him down. <laughs> so here, I'm gonna whatever. give you some Whatever. So, so it's gonna be. Oh, is that a real? How'd baseball? you get a ball so fast? What is wrong with you guys? 
<laughs> wow. Oh, this, wait, this isn't an official ball. <laughs> this is soft and rubbery and light, so that'll be easier for you. Okay. okay. Now, now, basically, I mean, I just, I don't know how to <laughs> What? I don't know what to do. Through. Look at your target, follow through, throw it harder than you think you would have to. I would say that's, that's my nervous. good advice. Not as hard as Steve Awakey. Awakey? Aoki. Bakey Awakey. <laughs> Steven, Steven, are you Awakey? <laughs> uh, okay. So. Dan, you were so quick to set this up. I remember you didn't want to throw on camera, Mr. Dan. Uh huh. That's true. You know Mr. why? Producer. Because it'd be embarrassing to fuck up in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> Just. Come you on, you come set on, this up on. quicker than I've ever seen you set anything up. We have a camera permanently set up right now. You know what we do need though? Your Okay, so uh, we have to get the camera set up, but uh, or the camera set up. We need to get a mic set up. Um, but basically, uh, I'm going to announce this. AB is going to catch it, and uh, I will let it know. And Eli's going to throw a steamer right down the lane. So bear with us, just one sec. We're getting set up here. Yeah, great technique. That form. So Ela is warming up. She's doing some uh, stretching right now. The dongs are here in full support. Okay. Ethan's uh, stance. He's looking like the, you know, Da Vinci's uh, what, Vitruvian man. <laughs> Peak performance. Uh, well, here, go ahead, talk. Go ahead, hey. Yeah. Okay, good. we're on. So, guys, welcome to the first inaugural H3 uh, baseball game. <laughs> Friday, May 20th. We're about to get this underway now. Ela is here to throw our first ceremonial pitch. AB is going to be receiving it. Go ahead, right down there, if you can crouch. Yeah, right in front of the boxes. Okay, Eli, you ready? Now the goal, I don't know if you know, but the goal is basically to get it, there's a strike zone. Honestly, if you get it anywhere within hand range of AB, I'll be impressed, okay? You're gonna pass the test. All right, Eli, whenever you're ready. Anywhere there, no bouncing before either. It's gotta be a straight. Hey, brother, hey, brother. You can't, no bounce, you can't bounce it and then it goes to me, yeah. All right, you ready? we go. Oof, I can tell this is going to be a disaster just based on that hand motion. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to, it's more likely to hit me, I think. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, essentially, yes. I, I, don't, I don't, I think what you're doing, you're like twisting your body. That's not good. It's all, it's going to be all in your arm. It's going to be all in your arm. Yeah. You don't want to throw it with your waist. Do whatever's comfortable, you know. I, I'm not gonna teach, you're not gonna learn how to throw a pitch in one, in one thing. Just, you know, follow your heart. That looks, yeah. No, he's been fine. Be fine. <laughs> Elon threw a, basically, a perfect pitch. Holy shit. Dude, that was a perfect line drive. Straight to A B. And, and wow. that and Ela's putting on her cowboy hat. She's ready to do a victory lap. <laughs> now Dan, are you ready to throw your pitch? Uh, oh, I have to now. All right then. Dan's been talking a lot of that smack. Was some serious shit. He's been talking I was saying I didn't want to do this for the exact reason that you were explaining. Let's you don't want to change position Go ahead. Then for a now, minute. So Dan is already talking up that this is gonna be an, an, okay, that's that's yeah, that's good length. Yeah. I think traditionally it's come. Okay, you know what? Not that bad. I think traditionally it's going to be way further. This is like easy mode. Okay, don't take it away from me. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. I think that, well, that's probably, yeah. All right, let's see. Here we go. <laughs> Dan said he's just going to throw it at me. Here he goes. Lining up. That's it. That's a good pitch. That's a good pitch. Dan passes. Dan passes. What can I say? We got a whole, we all got a whole office of true blue uh, blooded Americans. Anyone else want to step to the plate while we're here? Zach, go ahead, Zach. Zach, feel, full of confidence. Zach is throwing his hair back, full of confidence. Let's see what he's got. I already forgot why we're even doing this. Go back, back, back. <laughs> Wait, that's, good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's <laughs> good. Zach's taking it back quite a bit. Confident. Confidence, sometimes hubris, sometimes uh, sinks the ship. He's doing stretches. Go ahead, Zach, whenever <laughs> okay, you're ready. Zach. Zach is about to throw. I would say, of the three, probably the worst, but Hit not a tragic floor. throw. <laughs> It, 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 it bounced. It bounced before him. It bounced. Zach. It bounced way before him. He didn't have a chance. Okay, Zach. We all saw the bounce. Zach wants to redo it. <laughs> I don't think you get. Wait, he's going. He's going all the way to the wall. I don't know why. Okay, Zach is trying to prove a point. Okay, Zach. So Zach's winding up. I mean, it, it's fine. You're fine. You're fine, Zach. You're fine. He just went. Zach is blaming AB. Oh my god. Oh my god. Zach uh, is blaming AB, but I gotta say, <laughs> as the observer of that throw, it did fall short, but it was a, it was on it was like, you know, the line was right. Okay, exciting stuff. Here, I'll leave this mic here. I'll just put it right here, Dan. Yeah, you can just mute it. Alright, we're good. Zach, gosh darn it. I gotta say gosh, though, darn. very impressive feat by um Yila. Absolutely. Dan showed his his um <laughs> his grit as well. And Zach, I'm not gonna hate on you. It wasn't that bad. It's not a Hall of Famer bad or anything like that. It didn't go like to the complete opposite direction. Yeah, it did not. No, that's that. what I mean. The line was there. I want to see AB throw a pitch. AB just did a I boxing match. Myself. Did you throw? It last yeah, time? <laughs> I didn't throw it, but he uh, knocked Hundard. Athletically, I proved myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see AB throw a pitch too. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go. Oh, uh, you know what? It's fine. We're sitting down. Next time. Next time. But um, damn, Ela, that was really good for someone that never threw a ball. I am super. I'm so impressed. Thank you. I really thought I was gonna do it, Gary Delabicio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we need a compilation of Ela's <laughs> first pitch. That was sick. <laughs> um, so there you have it, guys. Impressive, Ela. Very Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I take my Americanness very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Guys, um, by the way, we have a new one from our boy, our boy in blue. Right of course, I'm talking about couch. America's favorite defense attorney. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, let's see what he's up Town to today. With my great client here, we just crushed this. Let me, let me just read this. Seven years prison offered for two felonies. Wait. That sounds pretty serious. That's pretty serious. It got, it, it got reduced to one misdemeanor and zero prison. Let's go. Let's go. This man. Let's go. This man is accused of murdering his wife and child. <laughs> the evidence was pretty overwhelming, but uh, one of the <laughs> cops was uh, drunk at the time, and uh, we were able to get the whole thing thrown out. This case, he was facing a felony case with two strikes, a domestic violence case. The uh, complaining Jesus. witness in the case also requested a restraining order against him. Jesus, so we man. used that court case in another court as an opportunity to cross-examine her under oath on the stand like a deposition uh totally obliter obliterated her credibility at that hearing and showed that she was perjuring herself now in the end we resolved this case for a misdemeanor two strike felonies were reduced to one misdemeanor Let's and go, dude. His, he was facing seven years prison how much prison are you facing now none Zero. Zero. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm free. Let's go. <laughs> what, what about the... I, I, I was like, dude, someone's trying to get a restraining order. He's like, she's unable to get the restraining order. We have totally eviscerated her credibility. Let's go. And this, and we're like, where are you headed now that you're free? Straight to her house. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's go. But Let's you know go. what? The man is good at his job. You can never say he's not good at his job. No, clearly. And our roads Listen, are man, full of drunk drivers <laughs> <laughs> because of his fine work. And he is very good, yeah. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> uh, I love that man. Yeah, come on. Um, you guys know I live in an echo chamber, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty pathetic. Here's Some that. say the biggest echo chamber. Some do say that. <laughs> you would say that. A good, 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 good time. Mm -hmm. Great time. Some say the best time. Some wow, <laughs> intrigue. Yeah. Some say the most intriguing. I did a whole apology, Sam. Are you recovering okay? Say the best that? apology. <laughs> it does kind of slap, though. Yeah. Some say it slaps the most. <laughs> it's such a roller coaster, isn't it? I just. Uh, it's the most intense roller coaster. It is. It, is. <laughs> it really is. You're Brendan. You became Brendan Schaub. I embodied him. And I'm Joe Rogan. Yep. I like. I said uh, the rolliest roller coaster. Yeah. I suggested that as an alternative in the comments. It's definitely would have been it's kind of fun to have someone back you up like that and echo you oh it's the most fun <laughs> i feel good i feel so good it's the like, best you've yeah. ever felt it's like yeah that shit was true what i just said it's the truest thing you've ever it's like said. an exclamation mark yeah it's the loudest thing you've ever said thank you bro yeah <laughs> fuck yeah so um by the way speaking of rolls i am no longer driving a rolls royce Woo! i am so happy we thought we were stuck with it for five years. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so happy. They were so, I was like, man, I did not like that car. It did like 12 miles to the gallon. Oh my god. <laughs> and like, we had two baby seats in the back. You don't, you, I don't think you're supposed to put baby seats in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> it's like, because the door opens the opposite way. And oh. the, the baby seat faces like, away from the windshield. Mm. It's like you can't even reach the baby. You can't. You try to put him in the car seat, and you can't even physically do it. It's well, and then the weirdest part is that it's such a massive car, but when Eel would sit in the middle of the kids, she would have no space. Yeah, I barely fit. <laughs> so, Great I wasn't car. sure they were going to take it back because I was locked in like this insanely long lease. But they were so desperate for cars because there's a car shortage. Uh, they took it back, canceled the lease. They even paid me. It was kind of insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm no longer driving that thing, man. I'm just couldn't be happier. It's such a ridiculous car. It's not even nice. It's beautiful. It's just, it's just a total stand status symbol because that's what it is. It's really not that nice inside. I have to say, it's super antiquated. It's not. It's not tech like up to date. That's a big deal. Yeah, like the navigation, the whole inside interior is just grew. It's just bad, man. It's just bad. And I gotta say, you know, for how much that car cost, the AC wasn't that fucking good either. <laughs> oh, that's unacceptable. I yeah. wanted some jet engines, and they but just also, wasn't doing it. It's just kind of like the attention that you get in it is just not cool. Like, mm -hmm. at least not for us. It's not our vibe. Yeah. Like, every time you stop at a red light, somebody's got to be like, yo, Whoa, look at that. what do you that, do? That was the worst part for me. <laughs> that was the biggest reason, uh, because... That was my daily commuter, and it's just yeah. like, ugh, I'm just some asshole in this m one person in this <laughs> massive colon that gets 12 miles to the gallon, and and then everyone's looking at you. It's such a flashy car, and I don't know. It's just, Yo, you want to come to my car and suck my car? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was not, isn't anything I ever said. But in a Rolls Royce, that would be more compelling, I think. I'm just saying. Oh man, that was about the Brendan shop. I didn't. I didn't proposition anyone. Yeah, that took me a minute to place. Can we tell them uh, what you got now? Sure. So he, <laughs> it's funny. It was totally unintentional. But Ethan went from matching his previous co-host mm -hmm. to matching his current co-host. Dude, it was not <laughs> what I meant to do at all. We didn't even realize. <laughs> yeah. So I got Porsche makes this all-electric car. It's got four seats. <laughs> And I was, it's by the way, half the price, <laughs> literally half the price of the Rolls Royce, even in this insane market. I went to buy a car, they tell me the ticket price, and they go, and then on top of that, of course, is 20000 because, you know, fuck you. Just because they're upcharging everything? 20000 on top. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, okay, whatever. But, but even with that massive upcharge, it's still half the price of the Rolls Royce. Which is awesome, but yeah, I have the same exact car as Hassan, which was not by design. 
I don't want anyone to say that I'm. Is it the same color? <laughs> no, it's different color. What color different color interior. You got? I got baby blue. I think it's blue or something. I I think yours is nicer than Hassan's. Oh. Yeah. Of course you'd say. That. Well, no. I, I, I personally, you, you, I like you wish it. you had someone like that. You've had one all along. What <laughs> happened before anyone saw, says that I'm comping Hassan? Everyone's I went there you to Hassan te- simp right now. Hassan no. simp. Hassan uh, simp. I agree. Uh, Hassan simp. I went there to test drive a different car, <laughs> and I said, "Hey, do you guys have a, all electric cars?" Because I didn't know. And she's like, "Yeah, we got one. It just arrived today. The person canceled their order, and like I got su- insanely lucky that it was there." I didn't specify it. I didn't know it was there. I don't want to hear any bullshit <laughs> about uh, being a Hassan Sib. And yes, the AC is fucking insane, dude. <laughs> it blasts my head back. I turn that shit on and go, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I want. That's what I expect from a Rolls Royce. Man, that car sucks. Did you say that it's like a light blue? Mine? Yeah. No, it's no. chalk. It's gray. Oh, gray. Okay. Yeah. Hassan's is the light blue. Right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's <laughs> No, I'm very happy with it though. It's that car electric. also has fake engine noise, mm-hmm. which is pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I turn it off. I like the quiet. But I guess yeah. the thing is with Porsche is they're super loud. We had one before that was a two seater. I always drove with the loud, <laughs> loud option <laughs> on. <laughs> That's awesome. You did. Yeah. I didn't like the noise. I love it. Well, I guess some Porsche drivers like the noise, so they put in this option to make it sound like a real car, which is kind of silly. But no, but the previous one was real. Yeah, the previous one was a real engine. But I'm saying, on the way home, I'll play you the fake (laughs) sounds. It plays it in the car and outside the car so that people can hear you coming. (laughs) That seems like the more important part is the outside the car. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it is, I guess, but uh, I'm not. Hey, listen, watch where you're walking. I don't know what to tell you. I'm coming in. I'm driving here. I'm like a dog chasing cars. Watching? I wouldn't know what to do if I got it. Yeah, so I have the same car as Hassan, and I'm sure that whatever show I do next, I'll end up with the same <laughs> car as that. <laughs> yeah, but if you ever, if you ever, if you have a ch- lot of money to waste, don't buy a fucking Rolls Royce, please. <laughs> Not impressed. <laughs> um... We should do our ad read for the day. Mm. It's that time. Oh, Hassan is watching. Uh, Hassan, uh, apparently, Hassan, if you are watching, Zach says my car is cooler than you. <laughs> Way better. <laughs> just Wait, is, is it actually different somehow? Well, the color of the car oh, is it's different, just the color. and the interior is different. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, but otherwise, the it's, car identical. Itself is it's identical. identical. Hassan's is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but... I, I personally, I like the color combo you got. Dick, uh, Zach was about to put his dick in the exhaust pipe. <laughs> Dude, that thing is because gr- I'm a I'm a huge Porsche lover. I mean, I, I, favorite car. <laughs> Zach but. almost jizzed on my hood. <laughs> it's beautiful. No, I I love Hassan's color. To be honest, to even it out. Oh, here we, here we go. Sorry, here we go. Here we go. Always here gotta we go. even it right, out. The blue is so nice. <laughs> I didn't see yours yet though. So. Oh, you didn't even see it. I mean, that Ray? blue I think is like the Ray? most beautiful blue I've seen on a car. Gray, chalk, bro. I'm I mean, still, I'm telling yeah, you, it's thick. It's dope. Chalk. Gray is very in right no, now. I'm, <laughs> say, I'm just saying, Ela. I mean, you don't like white cars. You saw that. Neutrals are very in right now. Mm. They're very in, and right that now. include brown and grays. Right. It's anyway, dope. here is a. Here is me at the Porsche dealership. I don't. What, who am I? Which one am I? Uh, you uh, are definitely <laughs> Michael and Hassan. <laughs> is, is Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> Why? I'm always Michael Scott in these comparisons, guys. Can I not be Michael Scott once? Uh, it's so true, though, isn't it? Um, okay, let's move on. Hassan, are you still watching? Um, yes, he is. Hi, brother. So, good episode this Friday, right? Or, I mean, this th- yesterday. We had a good app yesterday. People really liked it. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Yep. All right. Well, Hassan, I hate to do this to you. Well, if you're watching, I'm not going to do an ad read. Let's entertain the people. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, oh, you're going to like this, Hassan. Uh, Jordan Peterson, I don't know if you saw this, but this is oh fucking God. amazing. Jordan Peterson's audiobook is <sighs> off the rails, bro. <laughs> it's off the freaking rails. We should Here's probably a- give like a little bit of a content warning here. Like, this is yeah. pretty... 
fucking wild. Grandma said. Just warning in general? I yeah. don't even know what he's kind of warning about, you're giving. <laughs> I'm assuming he's talking about a dream and not something yes. that actually happened. I hope so. But he's talking about oh, a dream. Oh, is it? He, yes. Well, he's like, my grandma brushed her pubes on my face. <laughs> I thought it was real. Dude, that'd be <laughs> nuts. That would actually explain a lot about him, but I think I it's just it was real. But Zach, I told Zach, um, <laughs> did you buy the audiobook? Because we need to comb through that whole thing. We're we're gonna work on it. I'm gonna yeah, I'll this, probably work on that over the weekend. This is important. This this is big. So, but this is like soundbite heaven. I mean, I'm just gonna let this run here. Listen, I dreamed. I... This, this is not. By the way, I have to say, this is not like an AI. This is really Jordan Peterson saying this. <laughs> real shit. quick, how sound left? Oh, lame <laughs> hell. Well, let's do it anyway. Um. This is not a deep fake. This is truly his words from his book. I saw my maternal grandmother sitting by the bank of a swimming pool, which was also a river. Her genital region was exposed dimly. It had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. She walked over to me with a handful of pubic hair compacted into something resembling a large artist's paintbrush. <laughs> She pushed this at my face. I raised my arm several times to deflect her hand. Finally, unwilling to hurt her or interfere with her any further, I let her have her way. She stroked my face with the brush gently and said, <laughs> like a child, isn't it soft? That music is added, by yeah. the way. <laughs> I kind of wish it wasn't. I know. Well, th we're, we'll get the audiobook and we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll clip the... Uh, but I pulled, like, the clean soundbite. Wait, raise it up a little bit. Raise it up. Hello? It's up. Oh, what happened? The clip cuts off at, like, the 30 seconds. Oh, it's just yeah. dead air? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting edit. The brush yeah. gently <laughs> and said, like a child, isn't it soft? I looked at her ruined face and said... Yes, Grandma. Soft. This shit is fucking wacky, bro. Some shit just keep to yourself. I mean, <laughs> genuinely. Like, sometimes you have dreams. You don't need to tell everyone about it. Her genital know? region was exposed. <laughs> yeah. <dimly. laughs> yeah, I mean, Jordan, just, just keep that to yourself. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. No. Don't share that with it her. It had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Please, keep that to yourself, Jordan. It's just so unnecessary. I let her have her way. Wait, what? You let who? Wait. I let her have her way. <laughs> oh, no. That's your grandma, man. That ain't right. Please, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Just take it easy, please, Jordan. <sighs> All right, let's thank our sponsor, HelloFresh. Uh, thank you. It's just one sponsor today, so stand by. HelloFresh is the number one delivery meal kit in America. Why is that? Because you can get stuff like this bro what is in that you will never know it could be beans cheese rice guacamole sour cream salsa it could be human flesh it could be horse hair it's it could be grandma's it could be uh toenail clippings it could be literally just dirt um we don't know what's in that burrito we i actually know. there's uh Somebody on the subreddit did uh, oh, an a little x-ray vision. On yeah. It? Oh, so it is thumbtacks. Yeah, That's you were speculating. Uh, it was just, it's actually just thumbtacks, <laughs> yeah. which isn't good burrito filling, if you ask me. Oh Shout God. out OK Satron for uh, that. That's a bad that burrito. Service. They didn't, just to be clear, they didn't send thumbtacks. That's, that, that's fake news. No, my burrito's delicious. Okay. Yeah, good. There's some mm. real food. Um, dude, HelloFresh is easy, fun, and affordable. Fupa Troopers love HelloFresh. This is all pictures we get from our Fupa Troopers. Look at these beautifully Looks fresh, bomb. healthy, delicious meals. So easy to cook. What? And the thing that I love about HelloFresh is it's like balanced, it's healthy, it's delicious. And frankly, it is fun. Super easy to clean up, super easy to cook. They send you the perfect pre-portioned ingredients and instructions with information, interesting information, cooking techniques, tell you exactly what you need to do to make a perfect home-cooked meal. It's actually 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant, and it's even cheaper than grocery shopping because, you know, you don't have to buy a bushel of uh, stuff that you are not that you only need for one meal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, they've got new menus releasing all the time. They have Mediterranean recipes that are filled with fresh fruit and veggies, nuts, olive oils, and packed with fiber. 
uh, for a nour nourishing balance. Also, a Hello Hello Fresh has fit, and dude, that was it. Almost said fresh and fit. I was there. wondering if you're about to say that. And it says it here: Hello Fresh and fit. <laughs> it says that, and wholesome recipes for satisfying the nutritious meals. <laughs> you can feel good about, you know, the six recipes per week to choose from, including a low calorie and carb conscious option. And you know, they also have tasty stuff like. Look at this. They have tempura bowls, garden spinach, ricotta, ravioli, one pot creamy lemon, dill, chicken soup. Damn. Yeah, I love it. Everyone who gets it loves it. Uh, Fuba Troopers love it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash AfterDark16 and use the code AfterDark16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. <laughs> what are we looking at here? That is someone at the boxing event <laughs> with AB's burrito. <laughs> So many people had signs with burritos on it. Oh, I, I signed it. an actual burrito. You, you did? Yeah, and I felt bad because I accidentally tore through the tin foil, <laughs> and I signed it with permanent marker. Yeah. I'm just saying you can't buy, you can't buy clout like that. Hello yeah. Fresh. Mm -hmm. And then when he was fighting, everyone was spamming burritos in chat. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if everybody paid attention to our place. There was one moment where I seriously saw burritos everywhere. What? In, in yeah. Our ch in our chat. In our place, on Reddit. Oh, our place. Oh. You were seeing burritos everywhere? Yeah. Like AB's burritos. Yeah, I saw you. She, what? Hila posted I posted it, it on my story. Yeah. You had it, a AB's burrito literally was on our place? Yeah, every, there were all kinds of little everywhere. burritos. Yeah. What? <laughs> was that a dream? Did your grandma come and put her pubes in your face? You know? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> did that really happen? I did have proof. I, I saw the posted proof. it on you my did. stories. I don't know if it was my burrito, but I did see the burrito. <laughs> my grandma came with her pubes in her hand like an artist brush, and she had her way with me. Uh, go to hellofresh.com slash afterdark16 and use code afterdark16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Guys, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and we love them. Thank you to our sponsor. And that's it. My grandma sat in my face her pubes covered me all the way down to the back of my head I was in a tent of my grandmother's pubes <laughs> her vagina oh. smelled like old old rusty chicken she was stroking herself absent-mindedly my grandma's vagina smelled like bingo and buffet Smelled like Her the earth. region was my, exposed. My grandma <laughs> smelled like that. My grandma <laughs> was. Oh, my did. grandma. <laughs> my grandma was running the early bird special on her vagina, and she let me dive right in. It had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. <laughs> this wow. man is so fucking great. I let her have her way. I let grandma have her way. Oh wait, did I just see it? What was it? Oh, somebody found the burritos from there. our place. All right, pull it up. I well, you got to pull it. So you can All right, so here's the burritos. <laughs> those are rolls of bread, dude. The, those are baguettes. Those okay. are baguettes. This is, this is, Fair enough. This is fake news, Ian. I don't know why you're saying this. It was my burrito. Wait, why was everyone holding a baguette, though? That is interesting. It was the French uh, delegation. Oh, oh that's what it was. Making baguettes and everything. <laughs> to be fair to you, Ela, it, it, looks it like, has the grill marks. Yeah, it, it really looks It looks good. like the AB burrito. Yeah, I feel you. Bread come. You know what's funny? My burrito is actually a uh, French baguette. Uh, no. It wasn't. Nice try. There was a quesadilla. Bread cum. Nice try. Rewriting what is, history. What does that sound like? Bread cum? Bread cum? Bread cum? Bread cum? Bread cum? Yeah, why am I like, my like, that? voice is like shaky as I'm cum, saying. Cum, 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 cum. My cum. grandma. Her pubes were long like a, like a, uh, like cum. a, what do you call the things you tie between trees? A cot? Or is it? Hammock. hammock. Oh yeah, my grand, my we made a hammock for my grandmother's pubes. She was on laying on the grass. Her pubes were twenty feet long. I we let her a, have her way. <laughs> we made a wonderful <laughs> hammock from my grandma's pubes, and then I could smell the subtle waft of her vagina. The early bird special was ready. Her genital region. Was I was ready for the dimly. buffet of grandma's vagina. Stop. And I had a full course meal. You know, I was playing these back, practicing my Jordan Peterson impression, and I was just, I kept repeating it and saying it after. Like, I let her have her way. 
I let her have her way, her vagina. I let her have her way. <laughs> I let her have her way. That an appearance of a thick mat of hair. It had an appearance of a thick mat of hair. <laughs> My grandma's hair. We used it like a paintbrush. It dreamed of her butthole. <laughs> it was hard to tell where her butthole and vagina began. The pubes were everywhere. It was in her gooch. <laughs> I couldn't see a damn thing. <laughs> Trying to get to her vagina was like... Was like a... Uh, bucking through a thick rainforest. It gave me flashbacks to Vietnam. <laughs> what right. would we do without pubes? <laughs> where would we be without grandma's pubes? <laughs> Nowhere! I think he's got Hila doing it. <laughs> oh, right. hello there, Jordan Peterson, Hila. How are you doing today? What would we do without Zach? <laughs> Where would we be without Zach? <laughs> Her pubes were thick like a... Like a... Like summer in Mongolia. I don't know. You really need a, a sickle and a hammer to get through that. That's what the communists do, you know? <laughs> get through the pubes. You need a sickle and the hammer. I needed a I needed a neo-Marxist to <laughs> sickle her pubes. I love that man. Yeah, wait till we get our hands on that whole audiobook. It's gonna be they're gonna be hell to pay. Oh yeah. Um, God, we should get to some stories. So we have uh, a call in at two, which is in about fifteen minutes. So perhaps mm. we should do something relatively short. I mean, in the Philly D. Yeah, that. I mean, we could talk yeah, about Philly the Philly deaf D. noodles thing. You think I don't, maybe that'll take too long? I don't, there's not a lot of information out there. Right. About yeah, deaf. Talk about it. Yeah. Why don't we talk about that and then we? So deaf the noodles way. announced that he is suing Keemstar. <clears throat> now this is really. Took me by surprise, I have to say. Murderer. Um, <laughs> and I can't say that Keemstar doesn't deserve it. But let's analyze this from a, you know, completely fair. I'm going to be uh, impartial as possible. Obviously, I like deaf and hate Keemstar, as you guys know. <laughs> uh, and Keemstar has defamed me and many other people. So, yep. But let, let's look at this impartially. Um, here, first of all, this is where he announced it, right? Half that slucks. Anyway, folks, as you read in the title of the video, I am suing Keemstar. Now, for those of you who started following me recently and are not aware, nearly one year ago, Keemstar knowingly published false and defamatory allegations against me. He claimed I groomed numerous underage girls. Keemstar has since confessed twice to fabricating these allegations to punish me. He has never officially retracted these allegations, nor has he ever corrected them. These allegations have caused me great harm socially and professionally. I am now suing him to clear my name of these false allegations and to hold him accountable for knowingly making false accusations. And now, power cleanser. Now, I love can I say I have a, I can be a witness in a way. Go ahead. Some sort of a witness because I remember when Kim Star posted that, and then I think maybe one of you guys shared it or something. And when I saw that th that tweet or headline, well, whatever it was, I was like, "Oh no, not Dev!" Like I had the same reaction, right? Because we were all loving him, and I was like, you know, it's like when the Me Too happens, and it's like, "Oh no, not my favorite actor." Or mm -hmm. I was, I had that feeling, like not Dev, and then um, and then I was like, oh. Obviously, it's Kim Star, so gotta look into it. But it did that moment to me, and then it's like at the back of your head, you know, it's there. There's like maybe. So I had the same exact reaction when I saw that. I was like, "Holy shit!" You know, I believed it when I saw it because I don't know Kim Star. He, the thing about Kim Star is, he professes to be a legitimate news source. Obviously, that's debatable for people that know him well. I don't think the people that consume his content necessarily know what a liar he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But also, um, but also he's per he's reported on several very serious allegations of essay and stuff. So like taken if you take his track record as a news person who has broke several serious stories of this nature, I think you have a really good argument that he uh, has, you know, uh, breached his responsibilities here. And now defamation, well, let me read this. So this is the tweet he's referring to. Deaf, Noodle, uh, Deaf Noodles has allegedly groomed girls ages 12 to 15. Big YouTuber source said, victims are scared of him and wish to stay anonymous, but may come forward soon. 
hashtag drama alert. And then he responded to it saying, Def Noodles has declined to give us a comment on these allegations made against him. Now, what's interesting is this tweet's still up. And he never retracted it. Um, only a year later, uh, a year, let's see, a year later, he said this. This is the tweet This is in the filing, right? Yeah. So this is actually also in the filing. He says, um, don't you remember he kept posting nonstop fake P word stories on YouTube? So I posted this tweet to mock him. In May 2021, everyone knows this is a joke, that I'm mocking him, but now he's taking it completely out of context, acting like it's a serious allegation. So what's interesting about this statement is, one, so def I have to explain defamation because a lot of people don't understand it. Defamation isn't just lying about someone. It's when you lie about someone maliciously with Knowingly. the intent to harm their reputation while knowing mm -hmm. that it's not true. That's a super high bar to reach. And what this tweet does, which was posted a year later, um, actually proves malicious intent, and he knew it wasn't true. So it's kind of a weird tweet, because on one hand he's saying, you know, that it was a joke, and everybody knew that it wasn't serious. I actually don't believe that. I think the only, I the only reason people knew it wasn't serious is because uh, Def Noodles kept talking about it and being like, this is bullshit, he made it up, and stuff like that. But Keemstar never uh, clarified uh, or, or retracted it. So, like... The original... Here, you have... Yeah, the, ori the original's still up. I mean, yeah. And Keemstar's done that to me. He made a video saying I stole money from a video game to mm -hmm. embezzled money, and I, pro I did a whole video proving that it wasn't true, and it's still up. So, like, technically, yeah. I have a... I have, I, I could technically sue him for defamation um, the same way, right? By the way, if he's saying that everybody knew it was a joke, it's like, let's look at the comments. Do people know it's a joke? Yeah, he has some comments in the filing right. to show that people thought it, thought it was real. Yep. Exactly. Um, did you guys, anyone read the full filing? I haven't read, I mean, I just saw, I just saw excerpts and screenshots and stuff. Uh, I read through it. I mean, I'm no lawyer, but uh, here it no, is. It, it's not an expert opinion, but yeah, I mean, like you said, because you've been dealing with the Ryan Kavanaugh bullshit lately, defamation uh, has been. I've been sued twice for defamation. Right. Once by Matt Haas, once by Ryan Kavanaugh. Right, and so. Um, Wait, Matt Haas did defamation. Yeah, yeah, oh. that got thrown out. Yeah. All right. And so, yeah, uh, we've explored that quite a bit. And like you said, it is a, at least in the United States, uh, the laws are different. No, it's state by state. Uh, California has a really strong anti-slap thing mm -hmm. for public figures. And New York actually has a new anti-slap law that is kind of unexplored. So um, it's hard to say which direction this is going. But here's the filing. Here's the tweet we just read. Um, And basically, it's a really simple filing. It's quite, actually, it's quite short, only nine pages. Pretty sure you have like 30 pages on these things. Um, it's 14 pages! <laughs> uh, just nine, actually. Dark bag. But, um, so what's in, so right off the bat, you know, you have to say, like, when you're suing someone for defamation, you just have to assume you're automatically at the, on the back foot. So, like, just off the bat, because of the nature of defamation lawsuits, I'll say that Keemstar is likely to win. That being said, it's not a slam dunk for him. I think this is a really interesting case here. And I think Keemstar's likely defense is going to be, basically, they're going to say that uh, the Tucker Carlson defense. Yeah, no, nobody rational would take me serious. Nobody rational would take me serious. It's just entertainment. I'm Wouldn't not you have to prove that, like, he makes jokes like this all the time or something, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you'd have to show that there's a reason to think that this was a joke. I'll tell you exactly how it's going to play out. So if they filed this, now Keemstar's lawyers have to respond. They're going to respond by saying, Keemstar's an entertainer. He's not a news person. Nobody would take these charges seriously. Now, if I was Def's lawyer, what I would do in response to that 
find all the times that he says that he's reporting news. Find all the times he said, I just report the news. Find all the times he's talked about serious times he's reported on essay allegations and show meticulously that he is serious news person. And not only that, he has a propensity to report on essay mm -hmm. in a serious manner. And then, you know, Kim Starr's... And then uh, add to all that the, uh, the old guy that was fakely accused of... Fa that's just a... a wrongly He's accused. done it before. Yeah. A fantastic example. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that had, a, a, you know, dire, dire consequences. Um, and, then, and then I think Keemstar's lawyers are just going to have to try to dispel one by one each example that Def Nudo's lawyers can bring up. But that's it. So the, he files his, his initial one. Keemstar's lawyers respond. And then he responds to that. And then Keemstar responds to that. And basically, what's going to happen is Kim Starr's lawyers are going to file the anti-slap, which basically means that uh, um, because Kim, uh, because Def Noodles is a public figure, um, he basically it's really hard to defame public figures, and it it's basically like I have free speech and I can say whatever the fuck I want, and this person's just trying to silence me. That's what the anti-slap's for. Which is actually really true in the case of Ryan Kavanaugh and Matt Haas. And I don't know, you know, this is a really interesting case. I don't mm -hmm. think Keemstar, Keemstar thinks this is an easy dub. It's not going to be. I, it, this could go either way, frankly. I'm just saying it's probably going to go to Keemstar just because of the nature of defamation lawsuits. But this is, this is interesting. I think he has a pretty good case, though, Def. Yeah, he's got him admitting that he <laughs> said it maliciously. Mm -hmm. um, Which is like the hardest hurdle. Like that's the one, that's specifically the part that most Yeah, how can you possibly prove that? John, right. How yeah. can you possibly prove that the person knew it was a lie and said it maliciously? Short of them saying, I made this lie up maliciously, which is what GameStar did. <laughs> right. Pretty incredible. I have been caught in 4K. <laughs> but the problem is like, even in what you said, Ela, you said, I saw the allegation. Yeah. And then I saw it was from Keemstar, and I said, oh, I better look into that. That's Keemstar's defense. That's literally, yeah, exactly. That's his defense. His defense right is going to be that he's a joke, a walking joke. Yeah, yep. but like, a walk like in L. exactly you said. That's yeah. I and saw this was from Keemstar. He's going to have to write that with his lawyer, though. I'm a walking L. <laughs> therefore, nobody <laughs> takes me seriously. Therefore, this couldn't have been yeah. a It's true. Allegation. Whatever his lawyer has to write in there, we're gonna, we have to quote that for a yeah. time. <laughs> Whenever he reports the news, we'll be so like, gonna, hey, actually, no, you're not He's going to be person. at the crossroad. Like, are you really a news person or are you a walking joke? <laughs> yeah, you we'll got to pick a lane. <laughs> you know, unfortunately. <sighs> Little dear Kimi. Unfortunately, if first of all, I am rooting for Deaf Noodles because Keemstar is a piece of shit and Deaf Noodles is a friend of mine. And Keemstar is just a vile human being. He doesn't do this to just Deaf Noodles. He does it to everyone. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I think he should add the in terms of I mean, the fact that also he still hasn't removed the tweet shows like no remorse on his end. No, malicious. no attempt of trying to make it right. Right. That does kind of factor into lawsuits usually. I don't like, personally, I don't really love the precedent of YouTubers suing each other for defamation. I don't know. But, like, I really do when think this is an Keemstar, outlier. When it comes to Keemstar, Because who the fuck else would get sued for defamation other than Keemstar? Mm -hmm. so, and, and me. And Def says that it had a genuine financial impact on him. He lost sponsors. That's very interesting. This, that's very interesting. That's part of the... I don't know if that factors into the defamation part or if it just factors into yeah you, what the, yeah you know. no it if you can prove damages it's all the better right okay so definitely I mean yeah uh, it's not great yeah but Keemstar's defamed lots of people Basher uh, Tobiscus um, you know there was even a DM leaked where Keemstar was saying that to Basher if you guys remember that far back. That he was going to get girls to lie and make shit up about him if he didn't come on a show. Or what was the context? Uh, to my knowledge, though, he denies that that was real. Um, but yeah, saying something like, you better stop talking about me or uh, I'll have two interviews set up with underage girls to... To lie about you? Yeah. But yeah, it, was, it wasn't real, guys. According to Keemstar. Oh, there you go. Who is a beacon of truth and, uh, <laughs> and uh, transparency. Dumb motherfucker, A.B. 
So, um, it's very, it's very, very interesting. But I have to say, from just from my perspective, when I saw that, I thought it was true for a minute, and I saw all mm -hmm. the goons were echoing it. It turned into like a meme of theirs that they kept echoing it, but it wasn't said like ironically. They were genuinely. It seemed like they were genuinely trying to spread that rumor, and I thought it was true for a minute until I realized I watched Def Noodles' videos. Like, oh, they're just literally making that up. Like, it's kind of fucking nuts. Oh, one other. I think important aspect of it that we we didn't mention when we were describing it is the second follow-up tweet is also included. Def Noodles has declined to give us a comment on these allegations and made against him. Def in the filing says that A, that's not true, and B, in fact, Keem blocked him right before he posted this so mm -hmm. that Def couldn't even interact with it or defend himself. That's pretty bad too, mm -hmm. again, because yeah. again, he sees this, he's like, oh, I'm making an obvious joke, but it's not an obvious joke actually at all and especially since he never corrected it till a year later you know but yeah people, someone pointed out that keemstar calls deaf noodles defamation noodles and so mm -hmm. if deaf actually wins a defamation case i guess keemstar that's gonna be a dub <laughs> Defamed um, i saw somebody say in the chat deaf to all keemstars <laughs> hmm. right oh, that was a good one so you know what I wish that, I wish in a way that it didn't have to come to this, obviously. I would, I've never sued anyone in my life. If I was going to sue someone for defamation, it would be Keemstar. I'm personally not a litigious person. I don't want to sue anyone for anything, um, ever, you know. But uh, I understand defamation, you know, is, he, he wanted to, uh, he wanted to, 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 you know, justice, I guess. And uh, that's how you get it, right? That's how you do it. So he's going to put it before a, a judge. And uh, we'll see what happens. But it's going to be interesting to follow, definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm basically Hitler. <laughs> um, this is the, the quote-unquote fake DM. Yeah. So I should say, Keemstar says this is fake. Who put this out, Basher? Yeah. I don't, I don't know that Basher lied about stuff i'm um, not again i'm not super familiar with that story uh, but look i'm not brain martin if you talk shit about me behind my back again i'll have two interviews set up of underage girls in chat logs i have done nothing to you but since you want to swing at me get ready to get killed i have to say that's literally exactly how keemstar talks mm -hmm. like i'll just say that i don't i, I mean unless basher is like an absolute genius uh that's <laughs> and the thing about like i'm He's got this weird obsession with like if he anyone slights him the least, then I'm a swing back. He literally says that a swing back. It seems real, you I, know. I just want to say that I personally didn't hear him deny it, but when I got in an argument with someone about it, one of his goons, they said that he denied that that was real. So I don't know. It was a long time so, ago. So 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 he yeah. he denies that it's real, but based on my expertise, uh, sounds like Keemstar, and that's a pretty fucking insane thing to say. Thank you. But Let me I know, think because I got a fucking files on top of files to swing back at. The oh, Keemstar sure. even responded. You know. Good one, yeah. Jack. Uh, has, has he responded? He said something. He said he's going to take his play button because famously the first time that Keem was sued by that guy um, and won, um, he, I don't even know how he gamed this, uh, if it was like part of the settlement, court, the settlement or whatever, but yeah. he took the guy's YouTube play button. Yeah, so a so. DJ sued him for uh, defamation, which was like a way, way weaker case than Def Noodles. And Keemstar won on an anti-slap. And when you went on an anti-slap, you can pursue legal fees. And um, during the, I guess, settlement talks, he, he said that he won't sue for attorney's fees if he hands over his play button, which I have to say is kind of epic. He has the guy's play button. <laughs> Um, yeah, here it is. I'm going to add an, another play button to my collection. You know what's crazy? I just hope, because, like, I don't know anything about defamations. Deaf noodles. <laughs> <laughs> it gets confusing. There's a lot of defs being thrown around. Uh, I don't know anything about deaf noodles lawyers, but I hope they're fucking good. But I, I don't know what's his, what deaf noodles coffers look like, because if the anti-slap 
gets rejected by the judge, which would be good for deaf noodles, then they're going to have to do discovery, depositions. It may, unlikely, but it may go to a jury. And this could cost, this is going to cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I don't know what is would, going on. I tried to talk to deaf noodles and he's, he wouldn't tell me anything. He was keeping it like super close to the vest. I mean, that's so he's taking smart. it really seriously. Yeah. I just don't know. How far he can take this thing? Because these are very expensive, very, very expensive. I mean, <laughs> if it was anybody but Keemstar, mm -hmm. I would say there's probably right. a good chance they'll just settle. But I feel like Keemstar will want to take take this all the way. Yeah, no, Keemstar's yeah. not going to settle. Right. There's no shot, no shot. Um, unless he's well, if he's really losing and it's not looking good, they might make a settlement ar arrangement, but. That's not coming for a while. Someone said, how much does your legal stuff cost? Man, it's so much money. I mean, my, my attorneys are amazing, I got to say. Mm -hmm. My attorneys are like, I love them. They're just, they're just so talented and good and thorough. Wow, thanks for the gifted sub, guys. I just noticed 20 from Ishan. 20? Yeah, and 10 from Catherine. That's so nice. Thank you guys so much. Love this gifted sub thing. It's like... It's Wait, freaking... so how does that work? So how it works is someone buys, they can buy other FUPA Troopers memberships. And we learned on Wednesday that YouTube randomly gives it, but they give oh. it to people who are most engaged with the channel. Oh. So people who have a lot of watch time are engaging, they get, they're going to end up getting free That's really cool. memberships from these uh, very generous FUPA Troopers. So cool. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. So shout out. It's um, my, my legal fees are insane. I mean, you can only imagine I'm being, for, I got sued four times. Um, you know, I don't even keep track of it anymore. It's a lot. It's just a lot, but it's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's hard to keep track of because there's months where there's a lot of work to do and then a little bit of, um, waiting time or something. So it goes up and down. Yeah. But the good thing is that it looks like we're going to get our attorney's fees back for the tortious interference one. I haven't read an mm. update, but it looked like they missed their deadline for filing to dispute that. So I think they might have to fork over a fat check to me for the tortious interference, which I'm going to frame, by the way. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to blow that up and put it right behind us. And hopefully I'll have a whole collection of them by the end of this. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, so you can gift one. Someone just gifted one. Thank you, Kiki. Kiki, do you love me? Are you handsome? <laughs> so anyway, it's going to be real interesting to follow. You know, I hate that it has to come to this with the, with a defamation lawsuit between YouTubers. I don't think it is good. That's, I wouldn't say it's good for the community. You know, any legal precedent like that against creators is probably going to be just, it's, it's not going to be good. You know that. You know, when I'm fucking getting sued by Ryan Kavanaugh, Triller, or some asshole like Matt Haas, it's great. Uh, it can set great precedents, but you have two creators uh, going at it, trying to, you know, that's bad. I don't know. It's bad. But listen, you can't define fame people. I Unfortunately, Kim Star has been at it for years. It was only a matter of time before he got sued for defamation. It, yeah. I mean... Nothing, nothing else seems to help, you know, I, I get it. Def has been talking about it. He did everything, but look, the guy didn't even remo remove the tweet, like. Yeah, exactly. He did the same exact thing to me, you know, the same exact thing. His video's still up about me. Thank you guys for all the gifts and donations. Love you all so much. Discovery on Kim's hairline, please, Alexandra said. I'm going to back you up on that one. So, you know. All right, we'll see what happens. I'll definitely be following and updating you guys. We said discovery on why he wore all of his clothes in the pool. That is, we're going to need some information on yeah, that. We're going to need a deep dive on that. Keemstar, shut up. Yeah, but discovery will be interesting because they're going to be able to f subpoena every conversation he's had with his goons privately about Deaf Noodles <laughs> and whatever they've been coordinating amongst themselves. Um, and if he doesn't. You know, if he doesn't give it up in discovery, that he can be held uh, contempt. Yeah, I think I think it's illegal. And it was used in a book, huh? <laughs>
Um, anyway, we have our, um, our guest today that I talked about at the top of the episode. Jackson Palmer, founder of Dogecoin, is with us. Why don't we bring him in, Dan? Okay, He's sure. Ready. One second. I'm going to cue it up. As you guys know, Doge, Dogecoin has been Doge. Doge. kind of a big deal, you know. Uh, and it's been talked about the likes of like Elon Musk pumped it. It was like one of the biggest kind of cr- cash grabby uh, cryptos. I'm sure all of you guys heard about Dogecoin. And with us, uh, Jackson is with us. Hi, Jackson. Thanks for hey, calling. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Thanks for having me on. This is so cool to uh, speak with you about this. I appreciate the yeah. opportunity to talk with you about it. Yeah. So, um, first of all, let's just start from the top. Like, um, where did the idea for Dogecoin come from? Was it meant to be ironic from its inception? It seems like it. Yeah, I know <laughs> for sure. Um, it started in like 2013. I was like a lot of people like, what the heck is this? This crypto nonsense. Mm. And uh, there was every day there was like something else coin. And so I just tweeted one day. Like, uh, I'm going to invest in Dogecoin. It's the next big thing. Kind of just <laughs> pulling it out of thin air. I think I'd had a couple of beers at the time. Um, and I bought Dogecoin.com and was like, ah, oh, it's a parody cryptocurrency. Um, and so it was really a joke to make fun of it. But then, um, you know, a week later, uh, my now co-founder who created it with me reached out and was like, oh, we should, we could make it a real thing. We could put it, put the dog logo on, on top of Bitcoin and, you know, just to kind of continue the joke. And I was like, sure. Um, and so it really did start out as this kind of really lighthearted, just kind of way to poke fun at crypto. I've always had a very skeptical kind of opinion of crypto, but then as you all know, it kind of, uh, got out of hand a little bit. <laughs> so did you guys actually put a, I, I don't, did you guys put a lot of work into creating Dogecoin? Is that a lot no. of, no, it's not. No, it, it was probably like four hours tops. That's worth. it. Wow. Yeah. So how does it work though? Cause you have to connect it to some kind of. Uh, doesn't need the process and you have to have code and all this shit. I don't know how it works. Yeah, but it, it, you can basically do a find and replace in like the Bitcoin source code and just oh. change it to Dogecoin and then you change a few numbers. You know, you change the font to Comic Sans and you put a dog on it and that's, that's it. So that's incredible. It wasn't a lot of work and, and realistically, both of us, um, you know, who were both kind of skeptical. He, I think he's a little less skeptical of crypto these days, but um, we both thought it would like be a joke for like a week and everybody would forget about it collectively. But so, um, yeah, I mean, there was the Doge meme was really popular then with that like goofy dog. And, yeah. uh, it was, I remember seeing it on Reddit and everyone was just loving the meme of it. And it was kind of weird cause it disappeared for a while. And then it came back like in a huge way. Is that kind of what happened? Like if I pull up the chart. Yeah. Uh, here, let's pull up the chart of it. Let's see if I go yeah, to. Yeah, it, it was, um, there, there was kind of like a big wave, like that first crypto wave, like 2014. Yeah, I mean, it was um, flat basically until all of a sudden in 2021 in February. Dude, it yeah. shot up to freaking, that was so nuts. It shot up to almost a dollar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was like crypto kind of goes in these cycles where like it's the same kind of it's the same grift. It's just a different kind of angle every every couple of years. And so it was like first it was like, oh, we're going to replace the banks. And then a few years later, it's like ICOs was the big thing. And then, you know, more recently, it's been around some of like there was meme stocks and DeFi and NFTs and and, and stuff like that. And I think that combined with the the, like Elon effect Mm -hmm. um, just like shot it up. But yeah, I haven't been actively involved in it since like 2014. So, oh wow, um, yeah. So it doesn't require any maintenance, basically, from from the two of you who who founded it. It's just I don't know, lives neither, by neither itself. Neither of us are involved in it anymore. Like he's kind of, I guess, uh, more of a the face of it. I would say, like he mm-hmm. interacts with Elon and stuff more. But I um, I very quickly, like after the joke got out of hand, kind of realized like who the the community of people in crypto were and um tried my best to like educate people for a while around like the technology and the pitfalls of it but then i realized that nobody really cared about that they just <laughs> cared about making a buck and so yeah 
So just to give you guys an idea of how insane Dogecoin got, market cap right now, and it's kind of like the lowest it's been since January. It's at 11 billion, dude. That's insane. That's so crazy wow. from the stoop. From this goofy joke you guys did. Can you did. explain what does this even mean to um, mean, dummies like me? It means that people who own Bitcoin, there's $11 billion, basically, oh, of, pe- of real money. Like in the pool of... Yeah. Kind of, kind of. Like, I, I should just say, like, when you look at those market caps, they're all really inflated because mm. what it means is, like, it's the total supply that exists of that thing multiplied by what people would currently pay for it right now. Mm. Oh, I see. But the reality is, and we've seen this all the time, is that the second somebody loses faith and starts selling, then very quickly the price will drop off and the market cap will shrink. So it's not real money. Like when you say that something's got like a hundred billion dollar market cap, mm. it's actually no, like that's assuming everybody would pay what it's worth right now, mm. not if everybody started running for the doors because the thing was crashing. Got it. So basically you created Dogecoin and it quickly got out of hand. What was your reaction to like, I mean, so people started investing in it, but I think like around January 21, is that when Elon Musk started tweeting about it or like what caused that first influx? Yeah. Um, well, it, it was pretty big as well. Like even back in the day in 2014, it was still like, you know, in the top right, 10 cryptos. Right. I, I um, see. Yeah. So it, it was pretty big and there was, you know, scandals and hacks and all of that. And, you know, my co-founder and I, we never kept any of it for ourselves. So we were kind of, oh, so we didn't have a, a financial incentive, you know, because it was a joke, right? You didn't, um, you never invested in Dogecoin. No. <laughs> you could have made so much no. money. Do you care about that? Not really. Because if you put, um, like, if you put, like, you know, a hundred bucks into Dogecoin when you made it, that would have been worth a lot, mm, right? Yeah. It's one of those things where, like, I don't know. I, I feel like I'd have a really messed up opinion of the world if if I was, like, you know, on a private jet because of a dog on a coin. So <laughs> I'm, right. I'm totally okay with not that not that being the true. case. But, um, no, it, it was big for a while. Then there were scams and stuff. And uh, I did a YouTube channel for a while with crypto and stuff and then just completely wiped my hand of crypto in, like, 2019. And then in the latest kind of run-up in, like, 21 with NFTs and stuff, when all that game stop stock stuff, game stonks happened, yeah. um, I think uh, Elon and um, specifically there's a person that works for Elon who like manages his whole like all of his money for him. Um, I think got pretty involved. Um, I was I don't know the specifics because I wasn't there, but he just started like hammering tweets about it, and then that just like shot mm-hmm. it up. So you think what happened behind the scenes is he his, he's like saw it as an opportunity to make easy money and just bought a shitload and then started tweeting about it? I don't know. Like I, I can't I'm not gonna I can't speculate, but um it it's well I can speculate, but I, I don't know <laughs> certainly. Well that would I be think. a really easy way to make a bunch of money, wouldn't it? It would be, but like, does he need the money? So, like, you know, the, the thing, the thing with 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 him, I know you're you're talking about him a little bit later, is that um I think ego matters to him more than money. And Mm. so I think the cool thing for him about like tweeting about crypto stuff is that it helps him kind of expand his like cult of personality, right? Like Mm. there's a lot of people that are like totally on the the Elon train now purely because he's like pumped their crypto. And yeah, I I don't know if it's so much about like him making like an extra buck off of any kind of crypto token so much as it is. That's interesting. Him building like a digital army of people who will like fight to the death because they think he's Tony Stark or something, you know. Well, what's interesting about like the anecdote anyway is like if he did that where he bought a bunch of Dogecoin and then started tweeting about it and the price went up like, you know, 10,000 percent, that wouldn't be illegal, would it? I see that's the thing, right? Like right. that that's the thing with cryptocurrency, right? Um it's that you know, I've been in it for almost a decade now and I, I, I kind of believe and I posted this on Twitter last year that I think crypto is is kind of it exists as a way to help people um kind of commit shady do some do some shady shit and uh kind of shirk the responsibility of that because there's no like it's a it's a legal gray area or the regulation just doesn't happen to exist or you know um so yeah i think in like if he did that with tesla stock he'd be in a little bit exactly or any other stock but i think with crypto he 
can, you know, people can get away with that. Anybody can. So let me go back a little bit. So when you made this, did you, what was your early skepticism of crypto basically? It started off this? as, um, it started off as just like when there's, when everybody's talking about something and a lot of people that aren't very technical are talking about something that involves cryptography, you know, I was kind of like, mm, this, this feels like a little bit of a bubble. Mm. And so it was more of a, a general criticism of that. And at first I tried to give it kind of the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, back in the day, there was actually some, some, some people that I kind of aligned with more politically, like some Occupy people are involved in things like that. And I was like, oh, okay, like maybe this is some cool people that actually want to, you know, uh, change you know, power structures in the world. But um, then as I was in it for more and more years, I just realized, I was like, oh no, like <laughs> this, is, this is not those people. Those people slowly got out of it. And um, it increasingly just became, you know, the people that came from like the online gambling world or, mm -hmm. you know, the, the super like right libertarian folks who, you know, um, want to create some kind of, you know, libertarian utopia on an island or something, you know, and, and, and I was like, oh, like, I see what this is actually about uh, now. And so my, cri my criticism kind of, I guess, honed in um, after I was in it for a bit. And so basically, um, as you started seeing a lot of gambling and kind of people who just want to hide money, basically from the government. So I've seen you have really skate, I, I read what you wrote on Twitter, and it was mm -hmm. really incredible, I thought, and really, and just pointed, right? Like really direct. Um, was yeah. there was there a point somewhere where you're just like, this thing is just irredeemably fucked? There was, yeah. Like, so for the, the, the longest time I was like, you know, all these terrible people might be involved, but um, at the end of the day, it's technology and, you know, technology can be neutral, right? Um, and I think when I got really deep into it in like 2018 with my YouTube channel and I went deep into the technicals of this stuff, what I quickly realized is that um, not only is the, the promotion and the hype, you know, kind of a grift, but also the technology itself is fundamentally flawed. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very centralized at like every layer of, of the equation. And, you know, like whether it's people that are using like custodial wallets like Coinbase or MetaMask, which like, you know, one company is deploying into like Chrome browsers or whether it's people that are using like OpenSea.com, which is a centralized website um, or even the blockchain, which is like powered by like a small number of Bitcoin miners. And, you know, there's, you know, huge centralization of the you know people that own all the money on those things like the the decentralization is really a facade. It's not real. And the technology can't really support a lot of what they claim it can, uh, you know, but if you say it enough, people will start to believe that something is true, right? Um, and so the decentralization is really a lie and it's only useful to the promoters of the technology in being a really convenient facade that they can kind of, you know, make it harder to get caught for the shady stuff they're doing. Because they could say, well, you know, like I, I didn't manipulate it, it's, it's decentralized. Um, and, and a lot of people turn a blind eye to that. Yeah, because I think a lot of the enthusiasm for crypto in the beginning, it was championed as like this new, uh, this new monetary system outside the traditional system. And it was returning <laughs> power to the mm -hmm. people, right? Yeah. And now we had control and everything was transparent. Um, Anti like the bank, right? Anti-establishment, fuck mm -hmm. the bank. Uh, you know, the few rich powerful can no longer control our money. That's mm -hmm. not happened, has it? No, no. And it's it, it's interesting, like I was saying earlier, that every few years they have to change like the the pitch because they mm -hmm. they realize what they were everybody's kind of cottoned on to what they were saying, you know. So like it used to be like, yeah, fight the power and it'll replace banks. And then they realize, oh no, it doesn't scale. It can't actually be a currency. Uh, it's it's like digital gold. That's the next thing we'll say. It's like a mm -hmm. store of value. It's an investment, you know. And then they realize that actually it can drop half its value overnight. That's not like <laughs> gold, right? So then like, oh, actually it's an ICO crowdfunding platform. It's it's way better than than Kickstarter. Wait, what's ICO? ICO was like initial coin offerings that happened in like 2017. It was kind of like Kickstarter, oh, oh, but, but you know, and there was a lot of fraud there. Um, but, but my point is that every oh, few Bitcoin? years they change and uh, they try to, 
um, come up with a new pitch of, of, you know, this thing is going to democratize this. It's going to be great for the average Joe, right? And what they're really doing is just lining up a new batch of suckers who <laughs> will put their money in um, so and, who, and hand it over. Say- and to your point about like the, the Wall Street thing, like if it was really about that, then you wouldn't see Wall Street and venture capitalists so, so invested. They, as they love are, it. Right? I've noticed that. These guys love crypto. Why do you think these Wall Street guys... And these huge investment bankers and banks, just banks, love crypto so much. Um, I, I like. I think it's because. Well, I think it's mostly because it it exists in a world that isn't as regulated as the world mm-hmm. that they have in, increasingly had to deal with in the last thirty years, right? So the SEC has cracked down, you know, since the dot com uh, boom and then the, and then the recession. Um, you, you can't do a lot of this manipulation. You can't have a lot of these kind of back, uh, back room kind of dealings in, 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 uh, with publicly traded companies and, uh, or even, even privately traded companies. But with the blockchain, you can kind of brush it all away and say, well, it's all decentralized. Like I don't actually control that it's in the ether somewhere. And so you can't catch me. And, and realistically, like regulators are like asleep at the wheel. Like the fact that a lot of the um, you know scams have to be exposed by citizen journalists like Coffeezilla on YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, Molly Wyatt who runs Web3 is going great.com. Like if the system was working, then you know those people would be getting outed by the actual regula- regulatory bodies. But instead, average people have to do it. So to me, that that's why venture capitalists love it because they're like, this is great. This is and the there's Wild no West. accountability. I mean. Like Coffeezilla, yeah. you mentioned, he like there's actual straight up fraud being committed by influencers here who are well respected people in the community committing yeah. huge acts of fraud uh, of millions of dollars. And even after they're totally exposed, there's literally no there's no authoritative agency stepping into to. to to adjudicate yeah. it like there's no accountability even after it's been exposed it, it, there, there's absolutely no consequences and so that's like why you know people ask me why this stuff is so rife and i'm like it's because there are literally no consequences to you know all the stuff that happened with like phase clan and you know all, like every day there's a new thing yeah nobody ever gets in trouble yeah. and mm-hmm. i think that you know we've entered a really interesting phase like where it there's a kind of moral nihilism that I think is yeah. happening where people like don't care anymore. About even the, that's what I lost. see a lot. Like I'm thinking like even you guys are talking about how there's no repercussions or mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. It's like it's actually even beyond that. They're seen as cool. Like they they're game. Smart. They're smarter than you. Yeah. They're gaming totally. the system and you're behind. So you're you're Roger. poor and stupid and you should just like. Ad- admire what's happening that's so true actually that's I, I was talking to somebody the other day and the, the difference that i've noticed in like you know from back when dogecoin was first created when i used to tell people crypto is a pyramid scheme it's a ponzi scheme this is like th- this is really bad they would often reply like oh that's just fud you know like yeah. you you're, you're 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 making this up like you're wrong they'd actually debate me but now when i say you know crypto is a pyramid scheme a lot of people actually respond yeah we know <laughs> The whole world's a big pyramid scheme, actually, and oh. it's cool. It's so as long, so long as I'm making money out of it, I don't. Great. Yeah. And that's just like that's crazy to me. It's such a a change in the way that people don't seem to care about the collective good anymore. Yeah. yeah. I think the problem is that like there's been an everything bubble where you can't really lose on investment for the past five years. So everybody's like, it's all good. Everyone's making money. What's the problem? Um, but that's I think that's going to change big time here. Everything's you know, as we head to into a recession. Mm. But um, when you, you talked about how they are always making up a kind of a new angle to pitch crypto to a new batch of suckers. When you say they, is there people specifically that you think of who are like perpetuating this? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot of, so a lot of the, the VCs that are a lot larger now started off as smaller VCs back in the day and were investing in companies like Coinbase, the Krakens, the, mm-hmm. you know, all the different exchanges. And the exchanges are really the only companies that still exist that existed back then because, you know, that's how you make money, right? You take a slice off the top of everybody mm-hmm. trading something. Um, you ca- kind of can't lose. And so um, I think it's it's really a, 
a concerted effort by the exchanges and by uh, the, the investors that were behind those exchanges to come up with a new narrative mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in the exchange's best interest because if you, if you encourage, get more people in, the exchanges make more money because the way they make money is transaction fees, like they take a slice off the top, right? And I think a good example of this is, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, on Coinbase, um, if you go in there, they actually have a whole system where they will pay you to sit and basically go through glorified ads <laughs> about like so-and-so token and this this other crappy token, oh, wow. like, and you'll get paid money um, in that token, by the way, to, <laughs> to essentially gamble. It, it's a casino, essentially, and they're giving you some free money. And, and they love it because they, they, they build that kind of gambling addiction up with this person under the guise of decentralized education. And then they start taking a slice off the top of every trade that that person does right. as, as they become a day trader. Mm. Um, yeah. So um, I'm curious, what do you think? There's people like these financial self-help gurus. Like it seems like every single one of them is now in crypto. Yeah. And to them, it's a revolution. Every, if you listen to Gary Vee, for example, uh, crypto is going to change the world. He's getting a crypto restaurant. He's doing these V friends, which I'm sure you've seen. Uh, he says cryptocurrency is going to be in video games. It's going to be in uh, uh, everything. Our license are going to be in crypto. Uh, everything, our whole world is going to surround, uh, 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 be surrounding crypto. What do you think about someone like Gary Vee? I, I think, yeah, he and a lot of these other financial YouTubers and people like that, um, shameless self plug, I'm doing a, a podcast right now <laughs> called Griftonomics and it's Love all that. about, you know, these different <laughs> topics. Great name. Love the name. <laughs> I'm interested in that. <laughs> the first episode was on Web3, uh, <laughs> check it out. But um, I'm going to do an episode on, on these kind of people specifically mm -hmm. because years ago they, they were all about selling tickets to their kind of self-help conferences, right? And the that, that made a bit of money thing, for yeah. them. Um, and, and now they've all pivoted really quickly into like mm -hmm. NFTs, Web3, um, with a, a total disregard for any, like they don't understand the technology. I actually saw Gary Vee is running a conference today. Um, and uh, he got up and he was, he was saying, you, we're gonna give you all fractional ownership in this NFT, which doesn't make any sense because mm -hmm. like non-fungible means it's not fractional. So <laughs> the, the guy is just, uh, you know, a, a grifter of, you know, the, the highest highest pedigree. Thank but. you for saying that because I've been saying that for years. And people they love Gary Vee. They love him. It, Even it, here it's, on it's this a group, personality. Cult. I don't judge. Yeah. I don't judge the people that like him. But I feel like he's such a grifter, and it's great. Like this V Friends thing's the most shameless cash grab. It's I can't fucking believe what Not I'm saying. Not to mention, it's like the ugliest art ever. Like <laughs> that, that's just, the real that's, thing. That's right? when like I anybody... get started. It's like, can we make it look better? Like, what is all this <laughs> ugly stuff that everybody's buying? And I'm not I'm not judging anyone that likes Gary V. I just think it's interesting because, <laughs> listen, I mean, I guess the thing is, Gary V. had us a whole shtick before crypto that I think people really liked. Uh, he makes out with his dad. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> that's an interesting thing, uh, but a separate issue. Um, <laughs> But like, you should make I, an NFT of that. <laughs> right. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but you know, uh, you know, it's just he. I saw him talking about how he's like, I made three million dollars in my sleep last night just from selling <laughs> V friends. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it I, just. I think seems what like it is is he sells the. It's that cult of personality where you sell the 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 dream that. Not only am I like, you know, I, Gary Vee, I'm, I'm a multimillionaire, but you could be too. Yeah. And I think that's what gets people really suckered into it. And I think it's the same with Elon. I think there's a lot of people out there that are huge Elon stands that think that, you know, by, you know, spamming his replies, they, that he might become friends with them. And then maybe they'll be able to kind of, you know, be a, a rocket scientist or something. And um, yeah, real culty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he just posts he posts dumb memes and they like dumb memes. They're they could be best buddies. <laughs> um, that's interesting. But do you think like Gary Vee's uh, crypto utopia, de like decoupled from coins, he's like we're going to be using the blockchain to govern everything in our life. Do you see the blockchain technology being anything interesting in that regard, or is it just dumb? 
I, I think it's um, years and years and years ago, I, I thought maybe it could have had legs as something. But like I said, when you when you actually like look under the covers and you look at at the technology, you start to realize that it it just isn't created in a way that scales to the way that we would need to do governance as a society at a, at a mass scale. Like it works at the scale of like some scammer, like taking a few thousand people's money, but it doesn't scale up to like a place where you could run a country on it or, or anything like that. Um, and then you start to think about like the environmental concerns. A lot of these blockchains still haven't migrated away from proof of work. Right. It's hugely, hugely negative for the, the environment. But then even worse in my mind is, is that you're switching, you know, I think a lot of people as well that, that lean on the, on the political left as well would agree that it would be great to, to have, you know, less, less state control in some ways and, and have a breakaway in some sense. But to do that, you have to actually create a new system, which, which breaks away the power structures and the hierarchies that exist, but crypto doesn't do that. Not, That's the right, problem right, is what right. they've essentially done is just recreated a version of of the same system we have but instead of the government being the boot you're, you're now licking the boot of the venture capitalists and they control all the power so, and so yeah i don't think it, it you know that's not a world i want to live in and i think um th until there's a way that you can somehow with some magic technology prevent that from happening i i don't think that it has a real world use case Mm -hmm. By the way, just remember, we actually did already make this an NFT. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, I know you're not interested in Web3 and stuff, but can you see that? Yes. Yeah, so this is Frenching Fathers. We actually made this, uh, God, a month or two ago. <laughs> and it is on the blockchain if anyone's interested. Um, is this oh available gosh. for purchase, Ian? I know. Uh, I never okay. sold it. Yeah, maybe just put it up. I mean, this is <laughs> history. Now. Oh, it was never, it was never for actually offers. minted. It's just uh... actually, and what, can... what's interesting is we did it in the art style. We tried to emulate Gary Vee's <laughs> artistic uh, talents as well. Gorgeous. I, I will. It looks nicer than Gary Vee's. <laughs> it is a little more technical. I think. <laughs> yeah. What love? Oh, it's just I saying. mean, it's, I think it's up. I, I think it technically... You... So nobody's bid on this thing? <laughs> oh, there's multiple bids, actually, if you scroll down. Uh, it gets minted when you sell it, pretty much, when you accept a offer. The best I offer we got was <laughs> 0 0.012. Is that ETH? Yeah, I mean, yeah. come on, guys. This is this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. <laughs> Gary Vee sells this shit for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. This is way cooler. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so in short, I don't know. I mean, is it? Are we just basically waiting for an inevitable crash to zero? Is that where you think this is going? I don't know. I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday, and I was like, "Is that the only way all of this ends?" Um, and maybe, but I, I, I've I've gotten out of the habit of predicting when things are going to implode because it. I do think there's a lot of people in power that are motivated to to keep on. Uh, keeping the train going and, mm -hmm. and and i sadly i think that that will often come in the way uh, that that only affects the the people that are you know lower on the on the socioeconomic rung um they're the people that might lose millions of dollars because they bought a stupid v friend um you know they, they'll lose their 401ks because the bottom falls out of all of this um Meanwhile, do I think the venture capitalists will be lining up the next batch of people with whatever the next NFT craze is? Absolutely. And I, I think, I, I really don't think unless there's some, unless it really, really crashes or unless regulation comes in and, and the government actually kind of, you know, wake up and say, oh, this might be bad, that people mm -hmm. are losing their 401 case, that um, it becomes an issue. I, I think there is a bit, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for that in that the previous big crypto crashes we had before crypto wasn't as um, ingrained in some of traditional finance as it is today. And so back in like 2018, when there was a crash, you didn't have people with their 401ks invested. You didn't have people that had taken out, um, you know, mortgages on their homes to buy Bitcoin as, as to the level that you do today. And so it, a lot of people have actually hypothesized that a crypto crash might actually trigger a, a larger global uh, financial crash, um, and that would be really interesting to to see. Great, um, it would force it would, be it would terrible, force but... more scrutiny 
But yeah, exactly. That could bring crypto. about more people being like, oh, wow, that was a problem. We ha ha Nobody's called it out except everybody did, you know? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised at the... I would have to assume that there's someone in the Fed who's putting together something, right? Like, there's got to be someone looking at this. It's been going on long enough. <laughs> I mean, just scam after scam after scam after scam after scam by huge people, people that, peop that say, hey you know, that guy is a, has a great reputation and we love him. He just fucking scams someone for millions of dollars. There's got to be someone looking at that, right? I, I would hope so. I honestly, my faith is a little shaken having been in it for the last 10 years and not seen a lot, a lot right, happen. So right. I think something will have to hit closer to home. Like maybe, maybe a lawmaker will have to lose money some way mm. through something they've invested in. Ted Cruz tanking. is going to lose all of it. <laughs> All of his Cancun <laughs> coins or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Uh, to the moon. <laughs> you, what's your favorite shit coin? What's your, like, we have Safe Moon. That was a good one. We had uh, BitConnect. What's your favorite uh, scam or the craziest scam you've seen to date? Oh, you know what it was years ago. And I, I, I'm always like a little hesitant to say this because I worry that I'm giving something like, platform but may, i think it's dead enough now that i can talk about it there was a coin in like 2017 2018 called denta coin and it was a cryptocurrency created purely to pay dentists in wow. <laughs> so it's like they got, <laughs> they got a bunch of these dentists I, I think they were all in florida which you know isn't super surprising together <laughs> to and they said yeah all of our our dental agencies will we'll all start accepting this coin this is the <laughs> coin for dentists wow oh and, my god uh, can you believe it didn't work out can you believe <laughs> no, this is the new shocking. global currency here's right? the dental coin website <laughs> so they actually got dental people to sign up and they were accepting well, they said payment? they did. I, I didn't validate whether any dentists oh actually God, accepted so it, funny. but that's yeah, the that weirdest the thing I ever heard. Real in a field. God, that is just so <laughs> bizarre. How is that easier than just paying with dollars? <laughs> yeah, you tell me. <laughs> the case with all of it, right? I guess if you're like, I only own Bitcoin, then you can buy dental coin. That's <laughs> weird, man. That's so weird. <laughs> What's Denticoin worth today, I wonder? <laughs> Hopefully not too much. Uh, total unlocked. There is uh, good news, guys. <laughs> there is, uh, what is this How number? How do you even read this? So this is million, billion. So there's 2.1 trillion Denticoin unlocked out of a max supply of, golly, <laughs> 7.3 trillion. <laughs> so there's plenty left to know. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, I have a root canal later. It's going to cost me a uh, hundred billion dentical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that's a good currency to use for that. I can't wait for the headline tomorrow. Dogecoin creator pumps dentacoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're heavily totally invested. Yeah. Pump dentacoin. Oh, this shit's going to the moon. <laughs> well, thanks for calling. Thanks for sharing your story. Ba is there anything else you kind of want to leave the people with uh, who are wondering about crypto? We're thinking about crypto, no people in crypto. I, I would just say, like, make sure you, you know, go out and, and think twice before somebody promises you something. Just because it's got some fancy acronyms next to it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's a worthwhile investment. And, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, like I said, I'm doing that podcast. And if people want to follow it along, I'm going to have some more stuff on, on crypto and metaverse and all that. Plug kind your of stuff again. I'm actually going to do something on, I know you and... Uh, Comrade Hassan were talking about <laughs> online gambling yesterday. Yeah, I'm gonna do an episode on that, like Twitch gambling and like the, the Drake whole situation. stake, the stake. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just all crypto. So shady. So shady. Really right? nuts. Yeah. So anyway, check it out so, if you're interested. Uh, give, give, give it, com, yeah. Gr Griftonomics. 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 Yeah, yeah it's just Griftonomics on Twitter as well. Griftonomics. There you go. Follow. Uh, I I'll throw it in the description. It sounds yeah, really interesting. Too. Yeah. Um, thank you to Jackson Palmer. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for calling in. It was really it was great really to hear from you. Griftonomics, people. Let's check it out. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. There you have it. Jackson, the creator of Dogecoin, says crypto is a giant scam. It's nice to hear this kind of conversation. I feel like 
for some reason it doesn't make me feel stupid like i can follow and understand no you don't understand it's revolutionizing the whole world it's like the internet before back when people thought that was crazy <laughs> you don't understand it's not just a ponzi yo you're in trouble that crypto shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know so there you go it's pretty incredible, man. If that guy, though, I know he, I know he thinks it's a scam, but if he put a thousand in the Doge when he made that, bro, he'd be like a hundred millionaire or something crazy. Mm -hmm. That's the only but reason he he's made talking a good shit. He's point. bitter. That's yeah, it. he's bitter. That's the only reason. He made a good point, though. If he would be flying on a private jet right now because of a Dodge coin, what would his life be? He'd drink the Kool Aid. Yeah. He'd be like, yo, this he'd shit's be, crazy. He'd, be, he'd be, no, you know what he'd be doing? He'd be asking the flight attendant if he can or buy a, a horse for us. <laughs> massage. Nice lead in, nice segue. <laughs> um, what an interesting story, you know? Interesting guy. Uh, yeah, that crypto stuff is, is, is kind of scary. I wonder if uh, Jimmy Lee accepts a Denta coin. <laughs> He's you know, missing out. That's a really good question. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to ask him. Yeah. Um, yeah, good lead in. Let's talk about uh, these huge Elon Musk accusations that dropped um, yesterday. And the whole timeline of this is fucking great, you know. Basically, He's been tweeting nonstop about how he he comes out as Republican the day before. What was the timeline here? It, it's it's so what what he came out as Republican three hours after um, being contacted by the reporters and asking for comment on these essay uh, mm -hmm. allegations and uh, dec declared himself a, a Republican and warned of dirty tricks to come against him oh here's the timeline yeah this person wrote it up it was really good he goes elon historically donated to both democrats and republicans uh you know unionization efforts started gaining steam nationwide which uh, gr has a negative effect on his business debatable you know you want your workers to be happy right yeah negative on who i was just saying maybe his bottom line but I think more productive workers probably do better work, but mm -hmm. hey, I'm not, I don't own Tesla. Um, business Insider journalists contacted him for comment on an essay piece before they published it. And then Elon quickly spams tweets about how political attacks are coming mm -hmm. and it's the woke left's fault. He literally started tweeting three hours after being contacted. So as this insider piece comes out, he's actually successfully uh, convinced people that this is a political smear because he came out as Republican. I've seen so many people, including the quartering, who I, I have, a, I know he's dumb, but how can he be that dumb to be like, just, he, he literally was like 24 hours after he came out as Republican. The smears are already coming. What's funny about that is that the other way around. Well, what exactly? No. And it's so obvious. It's so obviously and the other way around. It's always done like that. <laughs> they always reach out to you a little bit before, try to get a comment. It's like you know it's coming. They said they even extended the deadline to give them more time to comment. But what's interesting about this is this incident happened six years ago. And this conversation he's been having with Business Insider obviously predates his proclamation that he's a republican it's so obvious spin that you have to be the i mean some people don't follow all of it so i i can understand people following it. but the quartering i know he's dumb but like you can't be that dumb dumb he, like he literally tweeted only 24 hours later and they're already going after him i was but like it, you're it not that dumb right? pull that tweet up would you it goes back to what we were just talking about he built this cult like following and so they're already so deep invested in every little tweet that he makes. Yeah. He's got an army ready I agree. to defend him. Because all the Quarterings fans love Elon. He doesn't want to go against the family. But he knows. He knows. I don't know. It's he, all dumb. I mean, he's got to know. So the story is, and I read the article. God, he looks like such a fucking villain in this photo, doesn't he? i seen this photo of him. I'm just like, dude... What the fuck, bro? Such a pasty little freak. 
We don't need to make fun of his looks, right? I think he well, he's a villain. He's a pasty little fucking. Uh, anyway, okay, fine. No, his, no making fun of his looks. Okay. Uh, so what happened was allegedly a flight attendant for SpaceX alleges that Elon Musk asked her to do more during massage. Straight out of the Epstein playbook. Pretty interesting how it's always the massage. She accused Musk of, oh, here's the, uh, is this the quartering what, one? What, is what this? was the name of the, um, that uh, Epstein doc that was like specifically about his like activity? Yeah, I is, saw is that. that. House in uh, Palm uh, Beach or it whatever. It was on Netflix. What was it? Um, God, I don't remember. Somebody in the chat. What, what was it called? Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich. Was that what it was called? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the description of the allegation is, I, I think, literally exactly the same pattern yeah. that Epstein was doing at that house in Palm Beach. Right. They talk about how he would, um, they had this whole system to go and get young girls to come over to their house to give him a massage. And then basically it would escalate into right, exactly. sexual massage. But this is what Elon's doing now to deflect. The attacks against me should viewed, be viewed through a political lens. This is their standard, despicable. He's talking more and more like Trump. It's pretty incredible. Totally. Playbook. I but saw nothing that will deter like... me for fighting for a good future and your right to free speech. This uh, tweet, like... <sighs> is, is an NDA... On so many how does levels. NDA work with free speech? Just curious. Because <laughs> this, he made them sign an NDA. I'll tell you one thing that's not disputed. He paid this girl $250,000 to shut up. So is mm -hmm. NDA, how does NDA mesh with free speech? I'm confused. Mm, not, well, it seems to be a contract. It's part of the to... story, isn't it? Because um, <laughs> there is like, in here in LA, they're working on making that now, they're working on changing the law so that NDA, when it comes to sexual misconduct, won't be. Right, that's why some people speculate he moved to Texas mm -hmm. because of that change. They the can no longer use NDAs and settlements for essay stuff which is really interesting law actually and uh all of a sudden elon musk can't wait to get out of california interesting um so anyway let's continue also here's the quartering tweet just show you what an absolute fucking moron he is like you know when i first read this i was like oh he even quartering sees through this but then i saw I haven't seen what he said. So, here's the headline. Uh, SpaceX flight attendant said Elon Musk exposed himself and propositioned her for sex. Uh, document show the company paid her 250000 for silence. Uh, quartering says, the day after he say he's voting Republican, not even 24 hours later. By the way, the dude was having a threesome with Amber Heard and knocking up Grimes. Elon bags his own pussy. See, that's the problem. They all, like, idolize him so much. He can't do no wrong. It's like, it's just crazy what he managed to create. It really is a cult. Um, so, yeah, there are people that dumb out there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty incredible. So it, it says that Elon exposed his, you know, fully torqued member to her was rubbing her leg without consent. I guess I should give a trigger warning. People are sensitive to this stuff. Too late. I already said the worst part, basically. And this is a, kind of the interesting part. Offering to buy her a horse in exchange for an erotic massage. Now, I was like, I was wondering, is that a good deal? Is that a good trade, a horse for a handy? I mean, no, I know Well, you want to actually get into that. So what's more interesting to me about this story is also... She was a flight attendant, okay? And they pushed her into getting lessons on becoming a masseuse so she can give him massages so she would be booked on more flights. Yeah. And they encouraged her to do it on her own time and her own money. Here's the quote from the article. They encouraged her to get a license as a masseuse, but on her own time, on her own dime. They implied that she would get to fly more often if she were to do this because she would be able to give Elon a proper massage. Uh, I thought it was kind of strange because she wasn't hired to be a masseuse. Mm -hmm. She was hired to be a flight attendant. That's the kind of the Epstein. Yeah. The Epstein I mean, uh, slide. You're the richest person in the world. You, can't you hire would think masseuse? he can hire the best masseuse in the world. No, he wants them to do it. 
pretty interesting, right? But um, no, but back to actually the really important question. Is a horse a good, is that a good payment? Well, for then, handbag? okay, so the reason I, I was going to answer that is that she kind of started to lose her shifts. So, yeah, oh yeah, once she... Once so she, it's yeah. not just the horse payment, it's really like, yeah, probably the horse was a good deal because she could have also kept her job. It's not just the horse. Yeah. But yeah, after she, re after she said no, mm -hmm. they cut her hours and basically fired her because she wasn't wanting to play ball. He knew that she was into horses, so she, he said he'd buy her a horse. No, but seriously, how much <laughs> the horse cost? I just want to know the, the economics of this. Seeing anywhere from... Three thousand two hundred fifty thousand. Like, yeah, I think it, it just mm -hmm. depends it's, on the breed. Yeah. Sea biscuit. You ain't buying her sea biscuit. You, you know what I mean? Three thousand. I don't think it's a good deal. <laughs> well, then you got to take care of a horse. J I mean, I'm, she, it sounds like she would would be the person that would want a horse based on what she, it says. Yeah, she yeah she, she was history. into horses, so yeah. I mean, but no, that's not a good deal because um, she's not a masseuse. She, she's a flight attendant. Mm. And that would really lower her value as a person. Right, right, right. That's the so, serious answer. So if she actually has a job and, she and if she gets a salary every month, she can buy her own a horse. Right, that's the and serious have answer. Thank self you. Self-esteem and be, you know. Nothing wrong with giving handies, though. If you want to. If that's what you're into. Yeah. But if you don't want to and you're coerced into it, right. that's bad. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if she wasn't getting to giving handies, mm -hmm. he could do better than a horse. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a joke here, guys. I'm trying to make. I know, joke. I know you are, but I, I get, I get so, but see, I get so riled up about stories like that. No, you're I right. I can't even make a joke. You're right, but I mean, horse seam. Maybe he should have offered her horse semen because I know that's very valuable. Right. Actually, the most valuable uh, liquid on earth by per ounce. So he maybe should have offered semen, Dogecoin. Yeah. She'd probably go for that. Dogecoin, yeah. <laughs> like a, you know, a load of sea biscuits jizz is like more valuable than gold by far. Semen tastes good. So maybe he should have offered that. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. So yeah, Just I mean, uh, let's see. I got some intel on this. Um, an an analysis of one of the major semen sellers, <laughs> hundreds of horses on file, <laughs> show an average of $900 per dose. <laughs> so I guess a load of semen is only worth 900 Yeah. Still impressive. Yeah, I mean, if you start selling... Day. Maybe yep. a I gallon. Mean, by volume, price by yeah. volume, you know. It's very valuable. And if just the right height. And if, no if that semen is really good required. and you and you breed if like they're a Kentucky world champ. derby uh winner, the ROI on that semen is crazy off, off the charts. When can we get horse semen coin? <laughs> just saying. I mean gold has a gold is a commodity. Why isn't horse semen a commodity? Like Come. that's a good store of value. Anyway, just making jokes here, guys. Don't get mad at me. So he offered to buy her a horse. Everyone's so mad at me right now. I'm just no, kidding. I'm not real. I'm I not don't reading. Think anybody I'm, is I'm, mad I'm, at I'm you. reading the chat. I'm just kidding. I don't think so. <laughs> just saying though, it is interesting. I love that. Just fact. saying. It's such an interesting. Fact, you know. <laughs> um. So yeah, basically, she got less and less time, and SpaceX paid her two hundred fifty thousand. As part of a severance agreement, that's a lot better than a horse. Yeah, just saying. Just Unless saying. it was sea biscuit, right? But doubt it. But that's more sea biscuit is more than that. Sea biscuit jizz. <laughs> I think uh, on the open well, market. That was an average. What he cited. Yeah, that was the average. Yeah. Type how much? Is, how much is it for sea, for well, world to, class horse jizz? I think that okay. uh, the the I think one of the most expensive was Secretariat. Yeah, how much was that? I'm sure we can find. It that sounds like he was just offering a horse, like any horse. I don't. Otherwise, they would have mentioned the name. You know, if it was like a. I'm gonna buy you the. I'm gonna buy you sea biscuit, baby. Yeah. I don't know what I'm <laughs> typing. I don't. How, how, how much, much is a sea biscuit load most, worth? Say world most expensive horse semen. I'm sure it will most pop up. Yeah. <laughs> don't be. Don't be ashamed, uh, Ab. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, drum roll, Zach. <laughs> Ready? Drum roll. Supposedly, winning big star semen is $4.7 million. What? Whoa, for one load? <laughs> Wealthy investors are willing to pay Ooh. high prices for a proven winner semen. Wow. $4.7 for one load? I'm sure the, the horse that just I mean, won the Kentucky Derby, I'm sure his, his loads will be uh, worth a pretty penny. 
dude that's nuts man can you imagine if someone paid you five million dollars to jerk off that's awesome oh my god funny if that applied to people like uh Semen of like the smartest person in the world. Yeah, Einstein semen. That's <laughs> yeah. fucking Look valuable. Can you imagine if we had Einstein semen? People would be crazy about that. Mm. That'd be people very. What about crazy. Elon Elon Musk semen? That should right. be pretty valuable. Yeah, too. people would pay for that. Thing. Right. Thank you. So this much. is theoretical. Well, you get it for free. Over twenty million dollars <laughs> worth of semen. <laughs> In eight months. If she was really unscrupulous, the play would be to like, I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> yeah, let's use not. your imagination. From everywhere in my room. Okay, dude, stop, what? stop doing, stop, stop using that. Can one. I suggest <laughs> an owl or something next time, uh, love? What is going on with your cup? You like my cup? What is this? This I was a. Sam just handed it to me. This was a genius idea. Uh, who's Sam? Uh, it's uh, a <laughs> the, uh, frozen cup. There's like gel inside. That oh, freezes. that's awesome. Because yeah. we got some complaints about Ethan chewing on the ice. Oh. Are you serious? Genius. That's why you got this? Yeah. Also, oh it's my God. really big. So it's just kind of funny how it makes. So you guys. Wow. I was wondering why. I love. I love this. Wow. I'm really <laughs> that. I really need that much handling. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to get now how would that apply to chewing on secretly. food we gotta get him an iv for food baby steps all right oh, pizza, it's baby drip. iv drip. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. very interesting okay wow i really am a pathetic fucking baby <laughs> cheers everybody <laughs> I'm not going. I mean, Another thing too, we're saying the sound of the ice clinking on the glass mm. and the mic was annoying. Okay. So. Thank yeah. you guys. Always not thinking just... of the show. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Incredible stuff. Um, so the weird there's a weird twist on this story. I'm not going to lie, that I feel like I would be remiss not to mention. I don't think Business Insider. I don't think they have a great track record of reporting. I don't think I'm the first one to point that out. And there's one really weird detail about um, this article is that the story is reported from the stewardess friend. They never even because talked to the Because she signed an NDA. Right, so it could be that they're just trying to bypass the NDA. But in the article they say, this story is reported from the masseuse's friend, and she didn't even ask permission from the friend to share this story. Mm -hmm. And so, while I understand it's probably a sidestep at NDA so that she doesn't get I in trouble, so. that's some fucking dog shit reporting, in my opinion. Like what? that, that I don't know. That is like the that the the ground is so like if you're gonna call into question the validity of the reporting, it's like. The person it happened to wasn't even in the article. She didn't even I speak on it. I disagree with you on that. It just seems questionable. What does Dan think? Yeah, what does Dan think? What do I think? Well, I mean, I I don't know. Obviously, I, I'm not saying I don't. My, my read on it, but. my read on it is that um, the most likely scenario is this woman did want to come forward mm -hmm. but couldn't. That's what and I this was the way to get around. I the understand, NDA. but like in terms but of like solid also, reports. Yeah, no, because obviously bad. that he he's already using that as a way to yeah, deflect, and and reporting. his defenders are using it as a way to deflect. And you're you're not wrong it that, that the optics of that it's, is it's not great. Ridiculous. But also to be a victim of Daddy Mask Musk, Daddy Musk, nobody wants that, and. I feel like this is the only way for her to bring this story out. Like, mm -hmm. how else uh, let me would say, she do that? Way. There's a reason Business Insider broke this and not the New York Times or the Washington Post. It's because it's embarrassing. Maybe. It's embarrassing if that's your source. Is the f I'm just saying. It's like it's. But it's it's not like the story is fake. It doesn't sound like it. There's the payment well, was made, right? Yes. The the element of the fact that there is an NDA and a settlement that happened. Mm -hmm. um, gives I believe her. A modicum of uh, it's like. I, so if yeah. you believe her, then I think you should open with that because what you're saying is kind of like putting the whole story into question. What I'm saying is I do believe her, but it's becomes pretty, it just becomes relatively toothless and looks more like a political hit or a cash grab on Business Insider side when they don't have like solid reporting. 
It's like, well, her friend told me this. We haven't even talked to her. It's like, okay. Like if fucking Dan came to you and was like, yo, my friend, you know, I'm just saying, it's not good reporting. I believe her. I'm just saying, it's fucking business insider. But what? It's just going to give him and all of his supporters, uh, like, every out possible to say it's bullshit. What can, what can she do if she did want the story out, but she signed an NDA? Nothing. But, yeah, no, I don't think anything, right. you know? And what's interesting is, like, you know... I'm just, I'm giving, I'm trying to be, I'm just trying to give an impartial. No, I think it's important I, to say, because it's, it's a fine. big angle in it's this fine. story. It's and it, like, and it's what his defenders are I mean, I read, with, listen, so it, yeah. I read the whole article, and I was taken aback when it ended with that. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? Her friend is the source of this, and they never even spoke to her? That just struck me as odd. That's all I'm saying. It's not like, but I have to say that it's not like they didn't confirm the story. They're not just reporting on something the person said and that's it. it they, they literally said we have not talked to that person. That okay, to. but they, the, the paperwork and stuff are there to back up the story. It's not. Right, that, you that's know, the they only did reason. Do There's, some yeah, there is it some validity like, to It's not the like story. they know. Just somebody came and told us this and we're telling you that. Yeah, I mean, they corroborate it in that they, I think, they corroborated it in that there was a settlement paid. 250 to this girl a severance and that's basically all they're able to confirm and it's all based on a friend's account again i believe her it just seems like you know pretty pretty bad reporting that's all in the nda um you know her unwillingness to speak on this um because they did correct me if i'm wrong but they did say that they tried to speak with her but she wanted nothing to do with it it wasn't that they didn't reach out to her. Well, we can pull up the article. No, I think... I mean, I read it last I night, and I, that was my understanding, but I, I, I could be wrong on that. Um, Let me... But um, regardless, uh, you the know... The truth is they could get fucking sued into oblivion by Elon Musk if they if like the reporting is that thin, you know? I was, And they may. By the way, I was, I was looking at the author. I was like, please don't... I was like, bro, Cat wrote this for sure. Uh, no, it wasn't Cat. <laughs> Just saying. Would have been funny. Uh, let's see. It ended with the friend told insider, I know, at least six, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. What's interesting, though, is one of the uh, go to defenses that Elon has deployed um, was if this were true, uh, describe my dick for me. Oh, pull that up. Yeah. Um, that was which it's like, all right, so it's a pretty cynical thing to say when you have this person under an NDA. Like, she can't say anything about that. Um, so it's, but I mean, I I understand why he said it because it's like, you know, describe describe a scar or a tattoo. He probably has that. a normal looking dick. I mean, how do you describe that? Like, not everyone's got a crazy looking dick. Like Harvey Weinstein, right. Epstein had like wild looking dicks. Apparently, it's right. Like, but regard, <laughs> right. That's a good point. Uh, um, but anyway, he said, but so let me read you just to touch on this important point. I think they said insider is aware of her identity. Insider is also aware of the flight attendant's identity, but we're not naming her because she's claimed to be the victim of SA. She declined to comment for this story, the mm -hmm. victim. Now I'll also read this excerpt. The friend told insider that she decided to come forward without consulting with the flight attendant. I think she's doing it for her friend to not put her at risk because of the NDA. Right. That's that's possible, but that's not what it says. I'm just saying. Right. If you're talking about the if you want uh, yeah, that that's that's the best guess, right? Mm -hmm. It says she says as a survivor, I felt obligated to share what I had been told. Um, and then they specifically say unlike the flight attendant, her friend is not bound by any non-disclosure agreement. That's what insider wrote. Um, I just, I was kind of blown away by that line. I was like, whoa, that's weird. Uh, so there you have it. That's just a weird twist on it. And I don't think any other huge publication, like I said, there's a reason Business <laughs> Insider broke the story. Does, not. Is nobody else talking about it? They broke the story. You okay, don't think but they went to New York Times else first? talking about it? Oh, it, I mean, it, yeah. It, now it's all well. Now news, that they've sure. broke it, then everyone else can report it. Mm -hmm. You know, report on their reporting. But. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what? So let's go back to. Um, let's go back. So 
Elon wrote on Twitter. Well, first when they called him for for a comment, he he gave them a really interesting response. He said, "There's much more to the story." That's what he told Insider. So he didn't actually deny it, which I thought was kind of damning and weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, so that's what he told Insider. And then, and now what, he's and then he out said, it. but also he said, "There's more to the story." That's like what every guilty person always says. Just wait until you hear it from my point of view. Yeah, I just wait like, until the the truth is revealed. No, it's total. It's totally in- incriminating. Mm-hmm. It's like it also more, just makes. I mean, I know he obviously didn't mean it this way, but it makes him sound like he's saying, "Oh yeah, there's it. a lot of girls like this." <laughs> yeah, there's a there's so much more to the story. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't mean it that what way. What I but, heard it as... But that's why he, sh- he should have just not said anything. What I heard it as is, this definitely happened. Mm-hmm. That's right. what I heard. <laughs> and then another interesting detail in the article that corroborates it, or is interesting, is that at the mediation with the flight attendant, Musk personally attended it. Mm-hmm. Right. right. I read that, That's too. pretty crazy. Here's the tweet I was talking about, by the way. How would they get all this information if they didn't do proper research on the story? I think the friend provided all that. I mean, they confirmed it, but I don't think they did much research, and just being honest. I think they got all, they corroborated the info. Mm-hmm. Just saying. You know. Musk uh, responded he's, on Twitter. He said, I have to challenge, I have a challenge to this liar who claims their friend saw me exposed. Describe just one thing, anything at all, scars, tattoos, that isn't known by the public. She won't be able to, so, because it never happened. You know what that tells me? That's such a bad Horrible. response. You know what that tells me? You could go and get a tattoo right now and say this was there and she didn't call it out. Like, what? It tells me that he's been specifically ready to use this excuse when this yeah. happened in Everly because he doesn't have tattoos. He doesn't have distinct Sounds body Sounds like he's marker. being advised by our lawyer from TikTok. He's yeah, saying, right. <laughs> Go and say you drank afterwards. You weren't drinking while you were driving. Totally. It's like the same logic. Hit and run. Get Let's a tattoo go. afterwards. Let's go. And she didn't know about that tattoo being there, so she wasn't there. Yeah, but if I was like a crusty old guy who's been doing this for a while, and I, like my, me, I don't have any tattoos. I don't have any markings on my body. I don't have anything weird going on with my penis. Just saying. Right? I wouldn't know how to describe it. It's like regular. So, and then like... So, what, what is there to course, say? I described it in detail in that uh, Bobby Lee episode the other day. <laughs> I described it in detail? Yeah. Oh. I don't know how much detail I described it in, but... Um, <laughs> but it's a, nor- it's a normal-looking penis, is my point. And so, this challenge is so obscene. It's disgusting, one. And two, it's like a fucking joke. I mean, it's mm-hmm. so ridiculous. Um, it just doesn't prove anything, you know. It's I don't know. I, I just feel like this is not the response for somebody who didn't do it. <laughs> no, and he actually took it further. He said, um, what's this one here I've highlighted? D- uh, is this what he wrote or is, did he tweet this? This is how he uh, responded to Insider. He said, this is what he told Insider. If I were inclined to engage in SA or SH, this is unlikely to be the first time in my entire 30-year career. That it comes to light, he wrote, calling the story a politically motivated hit piece. I mean, it's funny. If you take what the quartering said and responses like that, it makes way more sense when you look at him coming out as a Republican saying political hits are coming against mm-hmm. me right before this story comes out. Like, that's so fucking obvious. The yeah. attacks against me, he tweeted should be viewed through a political lens. This is standard. Oh, we already read Despicable. this. Despicable. Yeah. I hate how at the end it's like, uh, everything I'm doing is for you. I'm doing more for the world than any human alive. Just let me not follow the rules. What's I, I, I'm, I'm doing so much for you. Come on. Come on. Actually, I do think they actually have that opinion. When you become that billionaire yes. and you have that such an inflated yeah. ego, you go... I am saving humanity. I'm not you could supposed at least to play by the rules. Hand job. The least you could do is give me a hand job. The rules do not also, apply to billionaires. It. You can rationalize a million a million ways. Like, like I'm not going down for a fucking hand job. Like I'm too important. You know. And he's probably correct. I mean, Epstein did it for like no, his whole yeah. life. And yeah, and Epstein, nobody even liked that guy to begin with. So. Right. 
Good luck with Elon. But, you know, it's just interesting to see it all kind of playing out. Um, I don't know if there's anything else, really. Elon asked her to come in his room uh, for a full body massage. When she arrived, the attendant found that he was completely nude, except for a sheet covering his lower half of his body. During the massage, Musk exposed his genitals and then touched her and offered to buy her a horse to do more. That's awesome. The horse thing is just so fucking weird and bizarre. Although Epstein only paid him like 20 bucks or something, so. Very uh, uh, Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah. And issuing horse. I'll buy you a land. <laughs> I'll buy a the old, uh, horse for a handy. Yeah. <laughs> it's also this kind of like, he's so rich, he goes, everyone's got a price. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. got a price. He probably thinks, I can get a hand job from anybody. Mm-hmm. Well, would you get, would you jerk him off for a billion dollars? Oh, I would do a lot more what than the that. Fuck? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone has his price. He's right. He just went too low with the horse, honestly. He should have <laughs> given her cash. Horse and a stable. Right. The stable <laughs> would have come in. The stable could have sealed the deal. I'm kidding, guys. Please. Come on. Don't fucking kill me here. Please. Come on. Just saying. Uh, just saying. So, <laughs> yeah, so, again, uh, in 2008, um, After becoming convinced that her refusal to accept Musk's proposal had diminished her opportunities at SpaceX, the attendant hired a lawyer and sent a complaint to the HR department. Around that time, the attorney's firm contacted the friend and asked her to prepare a declaration. The attendant's complaint was resolved quickly after a session with a mediator that Musk personally attended. I find that very interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. He went there in person. That's pretty intense. This is a busy guy with a huge inflated ego. You know, he doesn't show up to shit unless it's important. Um, The matter never reached a court of law or even arbitration. In November 2018, Musk, SpaceX, and the flight uh, attendant entered into a severance agreement for 250,000 in exchange never to sue. And I'm sure it had a nice juicy... The agreement also included a very restrictive NDA and non-disparagement clause that barred the attendant from ever discussing the severance payment or disclosing any information of any kind about Musk or any of his businesses. And this is really interesting. Just months after her settlement in 2018, the government, Jerry, uh, Jerry Brown, then the governor of California, signed into law the Stand Against Non-Disclosure Act which bars the use of NDAs going forward in settlements involving, uh, you know, SH, discrimination or assault, unless they are requested by the plaintiff. Now, what's the timeline of, of Musk wanting to leave California? It was a few years later. And like, yeah. I didn't know about that, Bill. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I even said that last night when we were talking about it somewhat facetiously of, well, this is why he wanted to leave Texas. Um, but, um, cause you know, I think it had much more to do with, um, them trying to, uh, close his factories during the COVID outbreak and everything and him yeah. being unwilling to do that. And you know, that, that makes more sense for him to move out of California. Yeah. Uh, he was getting reason. triggered. But the timing is interesting that, you know, no more sexual harassment. NDAs and do their grid the, later. He's out dude. The <laughs> guy runs a huge manufacturing Plant that relies on robots and Texas can't even fucking keep their grid online like it's just <laughs> It's not that True. advantageous to be there. I'm just saying um, So he so again remember when insider called him he said there's more to the story but now on Twitter He's denying it outright. He says, where were these wild accusations against Elon Musk before he took a stand against the establishment? When did he do that? When did he (laughs) take a stand against the establishment? I must have missed that tweet. (laughs) He is the establishment, dude. You're the richest person in the world. Like, who are you taking a stand against? Exactly. God, I missed that that when that happened. He stood against the establishment. 
Exactly, he says. Fucking the nailed fact it. that Terrible he's even like echoing this kind of like replying to comments like this and totally. saying exactly it's just all part of like his building total that spin cult. Yeah, and for the record, like nobody normal would do that. And just a random Twitter person, terrible. It's like eight oh eight. It's like okay. And then he responds to that. And for the record, those wild accusations are utterly untrue. See, he didn't tell Insider that. Interestingly, when they asked for a comment, remember he said there was more to the story. That does. That's very different than utterly untrue. Mm -hmm. And then that's when he, of course, challenges her to describe his penis, which, as you know, is the ultimate. Uh, test of dispelling uh, the well-known uh, penis description uh, mm -hmm. uh, phase of every case like this. Describe my penis. Could you do it? And we've been married. We've been together for 15 years. Mm -mm. <laughs> Go ahead, Eli. What's Other than saying circumcised, I mean, what? <laughs> circumcised? Okay, that's about half or more of, the, of, of Americans. <laughs> what Go on. Go on. I, I cannot do this. Exactly. But, but I know <laughs> I let my... her have her way. Oh, wait. Jordan, describe my penis, please. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother sitting by the bank of a swimming pool. Wait, what? I think his mind is elsewhere. <laughs> had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. Oh, there... Okay. He was very close with his grandma at first. Her genital region was exposed dimly. Jordan. Jordan, <laughs> this, off topic you're, a bit. you're just off She was topic. stroking herself absentmindedly. I've this is the Jordan. So Jordan. This is not what I... Okay, he missed the point of the bit. That guy's deranged. Uh, anyway. He, he keeps responding to these people. It's strange how their friend... You can go pee, Hila, if you need to. I just uh, love here this one reply, so I don't want to go, but... Mm. Let me read it then. Okay. It's strange how their friend is the one who came forward years after it supposedly happened while claiming they can't stay silent. It's a story based on hearsay. My friend said no proof. Exactly, Elon said. Moreover, the friend in question who gave the interview... Wait, what's B... What's that? Business Insider. Okay. B.I. Yeah. Is far-left activist... Oh, the friend is a far-left activist actress in L.A., with a major political act to grind. It's like, okay, dude, like, shut up. That's just, like, that's, stupid. That's just weird. That means he knows who's the friend and he looked her up and what she's well, into? Well, whatever he knows, he's just, the way he's framing it, he's just trying to play And then the narrative. the fact that he even replied to this at all and said exactly, and it's like, well, you know that you made them sign an NDA, so what do you mean exactly? It's like if the girl wanted to tell the story herself, she can't. Yeah. So, what happened to free speech, though? Where are you going to mention that? I mean, He's fighting for free speech. Yeah, right. Right. NDA. He's doing it for all of us. NDA is... You can't speak when you sign an NDA. That can't be that's right, just, because um, Elon Musk is a free speech absolutist. No, that's just when it comes to enemies of the Musk, right? But if we're in it, we shouldn't worry. Right, he says absolutist though. He says I'm fighting for speech speech for everyone. Does that include the girl that signed the NDA? Except not, not you. He goes free speech for everyone, not you. For I was saying free speech for everyone, not you, you, you. You signed NDAs. Um, no, it was. Uh, so he said, did you respond to Business Insider? He said no. It was clear their only goal was a hit piece to interfere with the Twitter acquisition. No, if anything, first of all, Business Insider, the only thing they're after, I'm being honest, is just getting clicks for the website. I don't think they care about and the Twitter And then he's saying the story was written before they even talked to me. So, like, how much before? Was it before the Twitter acquisition? That's normal, by the way. You write the story. But he's blaming it on the Twitter acquisition. When did, they, when did the story come up? I don't know. I have no long. I have no idea how long they've been writing. It would be interesting to find out. But that's how it works. I mean, you write the article and then you reach out for a comment. But I'm just being honest. Business Insider is far from. Like I said, there's a reason the New York Times didn't break this story. I think that's a fair point. They're, that's fine. Yeah. I I get that. Yeah. But but I just want to, in my opinion, it just doesn't mean that the story is not real. No, that's of course all not. I'm saying. Of course not. Of course not. 
but yeah, this is interesting because he says he didn't tell them anything, but Business Insider explicitly says he said there's more to the story. So I don't know if he's going to sue them. That'll be interesting as well. A lawsuit could backfire on him, though, because then he has to do a discovery. Mm -hmm. And basically all the NDA and all the meetings and stuff basically becomes public, I think, at that point through discovery. Right. I don't think he's interested in that. But that's or basically on the flip side, without even a lawsuit, I mean, can't This know, will do nothing to him. Can't can't he just say I release this person from all uh NDAs. So you absolutely you could. Clarify. Absolutely. Absolutely. He could absolutely release her from the NDA. In fact, he should. He didn't do anything. I mean, I don't see why not. He absolutely should. Um, yeah. If he's innocent, uh, he should release her. But I don't think it's going to matter. He made this really shrewd and intentional decision to uh join the basically anti cantal culture pseudo free speech guys i mean look trump was accused by like 13 different women yeah didn't matter <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. i mean not these guys become untouchable once they come into this crowd this right-wing crowd right. maga crowd it's like you can't do anything uh you know it's the worst thing you could do if you're a maga crowd is probably say something nice about Obama or like, I don't know, uh, be gay, being gay is bad. Yeah. That's a tough one. That's a hard, that's a bitter pill to swallow. Thank you, Dan. But anyway, that's the story. Um, and Elon is just gone. You know what I mean? It's kind of crazy. He's just down the meme hole now. Um, here is by the way, what in the fuck is this? You guys see this Sports Illustrated cover? Now, this is a beautiful Mamma Mia. Awuga, awuga. Humana, humana, humana. I love me some Grammy milkers. Uh, Graham Graham Peterson shows off her soft, handmade paintbrushes. Wait, are, that, are those her pubes? Oh, no. Man. Oh, God. Those are definitely the appearance of a thick mat of hair. Those are definitely her pubes. Oof, that is just that that is just a demented mind. My maternal grandmother sitting by the bank of a swimming pool. Ugh, this is just disgusting, man. What I let her have her way. God. Unbelievable. Wow. That man is is severely disturbed. <laughs> um exposed dimly. There you have it. Um, yeah, there it is. What else? Uh, since we're between stories, I'll just acknowledge this donation that just came through from Ishan Kumar, a $5 donation, an ICU doctor, uh, been family for years. I caught COVID on the line of duty, resting and watching the podcast. Shout out to AB from Michigan, by the way. Thanks, Ishan. Shout out to all the doctors out there. Do you want me to give uh, AB like 12% of that donation or just let me know? <laughs> you want to split that up at yeah, all? Let me know how you want me to split that up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Shout out to uh, the Shout family. Out. Shout out to the island. <laughs> um, how long have we been going, Dan? Uh, two hours, 37 minutes, and 59 seconds. <laughs> so let's see. Let's go back to um, there's some stuff we missed. From the beginning, Wally P sent us a message. This is interesting. Really? What? Why are we not already coordinating a meeting with him? What's going on? What's well, I think up? because we haven't yet acknowledged it on the show, and I think now that we're doing so, this is our chance. He's going to see this. We can tell him how to get in touch with us. Um, because they didn't give any contact details. Well, go ahead and watch this video, and you tell me if you okay, so know what now, to do with this. Okay, so now Wally P, we've been trying to get in contact with him for years, yeah. and now he's acknowledging us, and we still don't know how to get in contact with him. Here's the video he sent us. <laughs> And you contact Tony, and Tony, they know me. And God <laughs> Tony, you, Tony, you guys have... A bunch of time, they help me, they give me rides to Sun Club, to shopping. And Tony, 
Can I just say, he oh would my crush God. on Cameo. He would crush on Cameo. <laughs> that oh, that's is point. so true. Dude, his Cameos would slap so, so hard, man. Yeah. Okay, but so you guys aren't in touch with Tony? Uh, not yet, but Tony, if you see <laughs> this, which it, I, it, since you're aware of us now, I'm sure this is going to get back to you. He, he, Wait, didn't he, he post on our me. subreddit before? Huh? I thought Tony posted a video of, of Who's Wally Tony? P. He's the guy who's been hanging who's out with Wally. doing the videos? Yeah. yeah, and he helped him set up a YouTube okay. channel and stuff. Because okay. he's oh. just been on TikTok up to this point. Tony, Dan at h3h3productions.com <laughs> yeah, is my please. email. Please send me an email. We'd love to talk <laughs> to you. We spoke to someone else that supposedly knew him, but that was a... a that was... Uh, yeah. Do you know what uh, state he is there in? Texas. Texas. Texas, because I would like to set up a mobility scooter race. Oh, um, interesting. Because now that I learned he's on a mobility scooter... Yeah, yeah. Would you fly there for that? Because hmm. I think he would have to go there. I don't think he would come. Mm. Yeah, I don't. Is yeah. that worth the trip out there, though? I might be. Thinking about it. It might be. <laughs> it might it be. May be. I don't know. If you don't want to go, me and Zach will go. We've yeah, maybe oh, I can gladly. We've, we've been chasing. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, maybe so I can send. Long. You and Zach? Did you really just cut me out of the same I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I, I you will, know how I feel about Wally P. <laughs> Dan is a big advocate for it. But right. me and Zach, I think, have sat through his live streams for hours. <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Love says he has in, t in contact with Tony. Is that right, Love? I'm not in contact with him, but I know he's a member of uh, the Wally Discord, Wally Discord that I'm a member of. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Well, DM, love. Yeah. Um, uh, DM him. All right. Yeah, maybe we can let's pay. Let's get the ball rolling. So maybe. Well, Texas. He could. I, he probably is too big for an airplane. He's a big guy. Yeah. But it's possible we could get them to t drive or take a train or a bus or something. A bu I don't but think a he nice would want to put be, himself We could that, charter though. a nice car so it's comfortable for him. Maybe we could get him like one of those luxury Mercedes we can rent. Like a touring like bus? Comfortable. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying there's got to be a way. What if we do a whole wrap to the touring <laughs> bus with like Wally? <laughs> <laughs> Custom decals? Yeah. The Wally T P <laughs> touring bus? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's kind of epic. Actually, we can even get a disability one where he can, he can cruise in with his mobility scooter and everything. Mm -hmm. A disability mobility. I'm just saying. We can work. Mm -hmm. We can figure this out. <laughs> right. well, let's just let's, let's speak to him. Let's first. get creative. Right. Take take no, that. I'm just step uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm putting the mobility scooter before the uh, horse, <laughs> as <laughs> the they say the of old. The saying of old. Um, hey, 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 yeah. Be best friend like Ad like uh, Ab Christina uh, and thank you and God bless you. I heard Ad and Christina. I heard Christina. Is he talking about your mom's house? Uh -huh. but it's did they talk the, uh, about him too i don't know i've i've got his chant i got his chat chanting family and like h3 before but that's my only connection to him that's the only time i've ever even got close <laughs> well we're, we're getting well, closer i think you got acknowledged i mean this is not this is we're getting closer and closer to the elusive wally p <laughs> this is coming to fruition perhaps the <laughs> hardest guest uh, <laughs> uh, in the history of h3 right. to pursue i mean it's probably been over two years of <laughs> of talking about Wally at this wow. point. Wow. Yeah, almost two years. Yeah. So. The hunt for Wally P. It could we could make an interesting documentary about this, I think, in the end. I, be I mean what we've been able to puzzle together about his life, it, it seems like he's he's had a wild one. Let's mm -hmm. put it lightly. I, I was in contact, I guess I won't yeah, yeah, I won't say, but it's someone very close to him and I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> well, what did they say? Well, 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 I'll tell. I like. I said I'll tell you up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you don't have anything. Mm. Okay. Interesting. I, I, thought, I thought you were gonna. Talk. Okay. Well, it's all coming together. Twenty gifted subs from Frederico Anderson just now. Thank you so much. Twenty. That's so, so freak. I, the Wait, did he do it twice? Yeah. Oh, oh I, I, I missed the oh, other one. That's so generous, man. And shout Four? out to the. Bruh. Thank you so much to Frederico. That is just so nice, man. The gifted sub is so nice. It's so family. I just love it. It's right. just a good vibe. Mm -hmm. By the way, we should plan when we're going to want to do the uh, Tiptoes uh, movie uh, members live stream. We want to come back in on the on a Saturday again and watch uh, the, the movie about... Uh, the one with uh, Gary Oldman as is a little it, person. Is it Tiptoes? Yeah. Oh, it is Tiptoes. Yeah. Where Gary, in the role of a lifetime, Gary Oldman pretends to be a little person and walks on his knees the whole time. <laughs> Didn't you see the trailer for that? 
I think maybe Dude, it was. It was a meme on the show. A yeah, long yeah. Time ago. We, a long you time definitely ago. have seen it, but yeah. it was years ago. But it came and up again recently. So okay. They said in the trailer, "The role of a life." <laughs> So this weekend we have plans, right? Yeah. But next weekend potentially? Um. Well, it, uh, let me see. We'll, we'll see. figure it out. It'll. Yeah, it'll we'll be have soon. to. Well, I just yeah, want to put on a show uh, for all of our new family members, weekend. but yeah. Yeah. But uh, that'll be fun. Um. Hey, actually, the members' live stream. Work. The members' live stream gives us an opportunity to do stuff we would never do. On yeah. That. Right. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of members will be really happy with Another the behind the scenes tomorrow because there's huge names in it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, what? There's a lot of big names that are going to be in the behind the Oh, the tomorrow. BTS really is dropping cool. tomorrow. It's going to be, yeah, I mean, they, AB was in there with all of the, all the big boys, right? Yeah, they had, like, a big mixer, and everyone was there. Critical, and... Um, Zach oh, Lewis is going to be in the behind mm -hmm. the scenes, Did too. you get a comment from Critical? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. You just got a shot of him. I Did you get a shot of him? You just looked at him from across Did the you A yeah. creeper shot? A little creep shot? No, actually, <laughs> me and him are talking in the background, and Lena's recording my brother hitting this punching bag. It's it's sick stuff. It's there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you did capture his voice. That sounds like riveting Let the stuff. conversation yeah. begin. So there you guys, they're quite a pitch to the BTS uh, yes. <laughs> coming out this weekend for all of our wonderful members. Another 20 <laughs> gifted subs from Annalise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, oh my God. That's crazy. Thank you crazy. so much. Family, 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 family forever. Family. Um, I just got a response from Tony, by the way. That was fast. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, okay. he's on, on it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, he's on it. Okay. All right. Oh, and Whoa. here's the preview of uh, the bus that we're going to put together. <laughs> okay, there. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this could be a hazard on the road, man. <laughs> I think people will be crashing all around that bus. <laughs> that <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the chats saying my cousin Tim needs to translate for him. Every Arab I've asked cannot place his accent. Like, and I'm mm. the same way. Well, I can't... ask what? Let's ask him. Let's have Tony ask what's his native. Wait, we know uh, where language. he. We know where he's from. He's from. Uh, it's he speaks Kurdish. He speaks Kurdish, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is he from northern Iraq originally? I think so. I like Northern Iraq. Originally. He's been told so many lies throughout these past two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So, is are there any fans in the audience who uh, speak Kurdish that could help? I've I've asked some of my Kurdish friends, and they but. <laughs> Do we have him speaking Kurdish? Because he's usually doing some kind of mix. It's it's usually a, a mix Tony? of several it's, English, Kurdish, and I don't Arabic. Think, yeah. I think I maybe Tony. Yeah. 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 So, if anyone out there speaks Kurdish and Arabic, <laughs> and uh, Wallian, <laughs> contact us because we're definitely going to need a translator if we want to have a serious. Yeah. There's multiple uh, dialects of Kurdish too. Oh, uh, so. makes it even worse. Play Plus, that again, Zach. And if you know what he's saying here, well, he says <laughs> "chinga to madre," which is Spanish. Okay. <laughs> he's throws, Wait, he's he does live in, he's lived in Texas for a long time, so I'm sure he's picked up Spanish. I think oh, he could get by with Arabic and English. We need a whole panel of <laughs> translators on standby. Somebody uh, said, I, I can speak Chinese if that helps. Yeah, I think not? it would. <laughs> we'll take yeah. what we could get. Join the panel. Like, Lena, Lena could piece together most of the time what he says, but it just it takes a while. Okay, interesting. Okay. So here we have, a, we have a, an in-house translator. <laughs> Thank you so much to Elon's crotch <laughs> who just donated 20 gifted <laughs> subs. Thank you Elon's so much, crotch Elon's rot. crotch rot, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, to the family. You know you get that crotch rot. I sure do, buddy. I sure do. Get that 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 crotch rot. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, let's let's keep going. Let's, let's let's just clear the dock since we're here. You know what I mean? Let's clear this B out. Uh, this is abrupt abrupt chaos. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I've seen this. I have seen this, and I'm curious. Like, you know, I thought to myself, what would I do if this happened to me? Oh. oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh shit, oh, oh fuck, 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 fuck. Oh fuck, 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 I don't know what to do, guys, I don't know what Forget to do. Forget about the camera. Fuck. Shit. I love she's still putting, oh, she's help. live streaming. Help. Yeah. help, help, I love that Get she's staying help. focused on the goal. What is she doing? I don't know what to do, you guys. Get guys, I don't know what to do. Don't help. you like just like help. turn it off with a towel? I don't fuck. know, because it's a grease fire. Shit. Didn't we learn with your brother baking soda? Shit. Yeah, baking soda. Throw baking soda at it. Yeah. Shit. Oh it's God. already going oh out, so I think she's fine. Oh my God! I don't know what to do. Is on fire. You're good. You're good. Just chill. Nothing is on fire. I need a fire extinguisher. What do you love? What? 
Nothing is on fire, I yeah. repeat. Please, I Nothing is on fire. Oh, bad. Oh, nice. God. So. <sighs> so I was wondering, what would I do if I was, I think I, I was thinking what I would probably have done is just put it in the oven. Because you know it's not going to burn anything. Interesting. Okay. I would probably just throw it in the oven. Well, is it, it, it. Isn't the right thing to do with a grease fire like that to, to either smother it or, or cover it in some way? I think if I, yeah, yes, but, or put baking soda on it, we learned. Right. That'll immediately put it out. But I'm just thinking, I'm there panicking. I need to make a snap judgment. I'm throwing it in the oven and closing it. That There's probably smart. worse things to do yeah. than that, yeah. Just get it out, get it yeah. in the oven. You know, I think the worst thing is to try to talk to your chat. The, dump it in the sink, which is what she did. Obviously, the biggest sin when you have a grease fire is to throw water on it, because yeah. that just makes it explode everywhere. <laughs> She is so concerned with like still entertaining the show. <laughs> yeah, God bless her. She's a true entertainer. Maybe, maybe uh, take the cutting board and put it on top of the pan. Could have been a good play, right? To smother the flame. Um, you want to do the Philly D stuff? We can do that. Let's see. Philly B's been taught. Philly D. Philly about to take these these nuts in his mouth because he's been talking mad shit on me. And I'm not trying to box anyone, but Philly's about to catch these hands, dude. By the way, you guys took a poll, and thank you to all of our great FUBA troopers. 70% said Philly D would win in a fight. Our own audience. Yes, our own, our own audience. Be your own people. <laughs> my own people say I'll get my ass beat by Philly D. You really live in the Who's on the chamber. verge of organ failure. <laughs> His kidney barely works, man. So let's see what he had to say about Well, it. I was talking to Ian. He wants me to fight Philly D. Oh, really? Oh, okay. it was his idea? I was like, that's, that's where he came from? Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, dude. He fucking fired the first shots. I was like, all right. I was like, all right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to train. And I'm just going to get really good at kidney shots. I'm just going to practice <laughs> one motion straight for the kidney. And I'll, you know, I'll kill you. I'll just kill you in the ring, bro. You better have that organ donor lined up. Just saying, bro. <laughs> just thought of that. So funny. Just saying. Is that a little too far? Yeah. Then threaten to kill him? It's, that's not cool. But the, the thought of you two in a boxing ring and he's just hitting you in the face and you keep going for the, the same shot repeatedly. <laughs> Here's a kidney strike. Here, here's a kidney strike. So, oh god, these guys are goons. This is me and Philly D fighting. I thought this would be cooler. Show me the kidney strike. Yeah, so here it is. Okay. Now let's cut to the chase here, please. Just so you guys could see my one move if me and Philly ever did box. So here's my one move. I don't even know where the kidney is currently. I don't know where that is in the body. But he's about to show me. There it is. Oh, yeah, dude, that's nuts. I just keep going for his side. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm actually just trying to fucking that's why cause Dan him we're harm. cracking up. Just imagine you just continuously <laughs> going in the same spot. Like, bro, nowhere else. On, nowhere else. <laughs> the whole stadium's booing you. <laughs> I just literally tried to kill him. That's so fucked up. Our, kid funny, our kidney punches, they're not legal in boxing, are they? Why not? No, they are, and they, they take you out. What? They, yeah, it's a body shot. Yeah, oh and like George God. Foreman was known for his kid. It's there's no pain like it. I've gotten one of them, and it's you just collapsed. You oh really? Up. Yeah, yeah I could rupture his though, because his is his is uh yeah. I mean, <laughs> he has a condition apparently, and you know, so that's me. You see that? That's just the whole. This is the whole boxing match. <laughs> that's funny, right? It's okay. It's pretty funny. The, the boxer would be like, he's going for his kidney. Philly D is known. He has a kidney condition. Ethan is trying to kill him right now. What I think would be funny is after you, if you get on stage, I just I envision you doing like all your dance moves. Oh, yeah. And I think that's going to be funny. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing, oh, I'm seeing that kidney shots are not legal. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. Oh, shots are legal. Because yeah, Stallone said that in uh, Spy Kids uh, Part 3. Um... Kidney oh. punches are not legal in boxing. Really? I just thought it was a normal body shot. I mean, I can make it look like an accident, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. People do it yeah. all the time, so that must be what it is. They just 
Maybe they lose points or something. But. Sweep the kidney. I don't care about points. If he dies, I win. <laughs> right? Technically, yes. There you go. We love Philly D, though, over here. We're, we're all Philly fans. We're not trying to kill him. Who are you? Who authorized that statement? <laughs> all right, let's watch. I'm a fucking killer. See, he has like an organ thing. He's, so, he's, got, he's, like his... he's got all kinds of things. <laughs> no, but my I don't have organ failure. <laughs> <laughs> I shit myself. DeFranco. Was too stunned to speak. Okay, so in, in Ethan's defense, it is true that I only have one spleen, but that's because everyone only has one spleen. Actually, that's not true. About 10% of people have two spleens. It's called an accessory spleen. I just learned that this morning. But we'll get to that after I say, Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome Sup. back to the Philip DeFranco <laughs> Show. I, I'm uh, just giving you treats. There's, there's a compilation in the doc of him talking about you if you just want to watch that. Sup! No, I just want to. Oh, so is, that's that's all you said about me? There, there's more. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see all the trash talk. Um, Philly D wants the smoke. Here's the highlight. This is all from that episode. Yeah. Well, I was talking to Ian. He wants me to fight Philly D. No, really? Okay. You watch this. Serving fighting. Which was okay, the, yeah, is, is, he said, he said, and yesterday, if you watched H3 TV, the news broke. He said Philly is, is seriously considering fighting. Which was absolutely massive news to a number of people, including me, because that's not a thing that's <laughs> That's happening. what Ian told me. In three He's and a half with years, your mind. Well, no, because he actually interviewed Ian. Is that in this? Uh, yeah, it's, it's in this compilation right okay, here. Okay, I'll just let it play then. Of finding out who the fuck is lying about me. As well as to provide equal representation for yesterday's Dr. Mike interview, we have iDubs coming in for a quick chat. So, yeah, the first thing I really oh have God. to ask yeah, you, you is, got messed up. did you tell Ethan Klein that I was interested in boxing <laughs> as a way to trick him into fighting me? Well, I, I thought you, I, I don't know where I heard it. I thought, I thought you were interested. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe it got lost in communication, but I thought you were down to fight, at least Ethan. Ethan I was like, Ethan I was... and you would be a good fight. Yeah. I don't think it would be a fair fight, even though yesterday he said he could kill me. <laughs> oh, no, no. Was that, was that confusion, or is that, uh, is that a tactic? So Philly really thinks he could beat my ass, huh? I mean, look. <laughs> he's a bigger guy. He's a little taller. The he's, cricket's he's, in the room. He's bulkier. I know that most people think I get my ass beat, and I understand that. I'm not offended by it. You are not well, in shape. But if you guys saw me at my physical prime, but I'm a fuck. Okay. Well, play that. You'll uh, fight him in high school. I, every blood test I've said <laughs> says that I'm an elite athlete. Whatever that Kardashian quote is. I oh, think if you exercised, you could. Philly D, you know. You keep ignoring uh, the suggestion that he listens or not. <laughs> Wait, that I need to exercise? Well, I'm not fighting him in my current pos in my current condition. Right. I'm not fighting anybody. But you'd fight him five years ago when you were in your prime. If we trained for a year, I'm saying hypothetically. Well, okay. You got I'll, I'll I'll say two things. One, you brag about being unhealthy all the time, so I can see why a lot of people. Philly, like, if, there's a reason Philly shoots from the chest up. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Go ahead, A.B. He's skinny, um, though. He's a yeah, skinny like, legend. Yeah, like, we showed your, like, lime green pesto on, on stream. So <laughs> and people doubting you. But the other thing is, and Dan brought this up the other day, um, when we are talking about this, is that you are, you do have, like, some weird athletic abilities. Um, I think I do. You, That's you the really thing. do. Like, the baseball was one of the examples he brought No, I, I think, like, I am, I am, I, I am athletic. I am. It's crazy, right? I mean, I'm an old guy. I'm out of shape, but like, I have, I think I have naturally good balance and athletic abilities when I'm, you know, training and stuff. I just think it would take a lot of tra training to be able to. But yeah, I think you're overestimating how in shape Philly D is. I think he's in shape. Yeah, he did lose a lot of weight recently. I think you are underestimating. Can it be both? Yeah. Thank you. Either way, I'm not fighting him. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I like to I like to fantasize that uh, <laughs> in a world where we actually fight, I think it would be a it good would be a close arc fight. for the show. It would like, be a good show. Now. The and thing is, I would have to train so hard. <laughs> you would, yeah. yeah. I mean, you saw I being. And I've got kids. You're gonna. I mean, it's gonna be long ass days without. You know what I mean? I'll have to wake up early and go to bed early. It's just gonna be. Well, that's fine. But I'm just saying, like, it's gonna be long fucking days. We got two young kids. I will support either. 
Philly's a dad. Training time, if that's what his kids are older. They're like away for. If you're away for for training. Well, I'm still well, be, if I just practice a kidney, I'll punch, take the it's bullet. Easy, though. <laughs> then I'm going to be boxing still like once a week. If you want to come with me, one of the times. You're still doing it once a week. About once a week, yeah. Yeah. Just once, Get right? That's here. enough. Once a week. Well, I just go once, just once. Yeah, just once. Just fight. ask where the kidney is, and Wally will show you. You'll just <laughs> you just go in the ring with one glove. <laughs> just like I only got <laughs> really Look, one. Look, if if we fought now, Philly would would you know. He would probably win, but that's true of anyone, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> I don't think I could beat up a single living person. But if uh, you agree to it, then you've made the commitment. That serves as the motivation to, you know, actually train and get in better shape. But I don't even know and Philly. Year, according I mean, to Philly, he's not even fighting anyone. Well, it seemed like. Let's hear this. Let's hear this that you use to actively get some of the people on the last card to fight? Oh, no, not at all. A everyone was super down to do it without, like, even knowing who their opponent was. And two, Ethan Klein, I never said I wanted to fight you. If I did, you would get hurt. And that would go against my monetary interest because then I wouldn't be able to put your beautiful face in my mouth. <laughs> last all right. thing, the question I want to kick out to you, <laughs> beautiful bastards, is even though I would not fight, who would you like to see me fight? <laughs> Bitch, me. <laughs> who else are you going to fight? <laughs> You know, God, the memes would be so good though. I could get like, I could come out with like the donor list or like a fake kidney and shit. The shit talk would go. I'll come out to the box room with like a ice chest with like a kidney inside. Oh my God. The shit talking could go so good. I, my boxing name could be Ethan Kidney Rupture Klein. It'd be so fire. But I don't think he's got the balls, frankly, to fight me. <laughs> Even and then this is, of course, shout out to the Fuber Trooper family. A poll, someone put this poll up. Zero points, by the way. Uh, Ethan said he what? might. It wasn't the other day. How did you guys find this at zero <laughs> points? You guys found the poll of me saying I'm gonna get my ass beat uh, with zero <laughs> points. Because uh, we made it. That's I our saw all. It. I voted for you. <laughs> sure, you did. Of 200 votes. Uh, 120, pretty astounding uh, ratio. I think Philly, the news king, beats me. So I don't blame you guys, though. It's not looking good for me. Definitely. <laughs> so there you have it, Philly D. Um, actually, I'm obviously just goofing around. We had funny exchange on Twitter, and even his wife made a really funny comment when I said, I tweeted out something like, I would absolutely rupture Philly D's kidney if we boxed. And his wife was, said something really funny like, that. this could actually work out good because he's going to need a replacement kidney anyway. Maybe it gets him to <laughs> the top of the donor list. Speed it along, yeah. <laughs> Very funny. I, I, I had a good chuckle out of that. And then uh, he said something about Ryan Kavanaugh. Oh, yeah, training. he says, not after Ryan Kavanaugh yeah. funds my training camp. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, Ryan Kavanaugh's broke. He lost almost a billion dollars last year. Nice try. He's not paying for anyone's training camp. That was my ultimate diss. Thank you. Where's the one from his wife? He. It was in that thread. Oh, careful. There's. There's bad. Oh, here it is. Liz DeFranco. He's going to need a transplant at some point anyway. So you may actually help him move up on the waiting list. There yeah, you have it. Doing a service. There you have it. <laughs> my current beef with Philip DeFranco. <laughs> Awesome. What about Bobby Lee? Fight Bobby Lee? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> uh, he likes video games as well. Well, he's also, isn't he 50? Like 50. Yeah, he's old. Yeah, it's probably not the best idea. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, interestingly, me and Philly are like one year apart. We're pretty close in size. I'm 5'11". He's six foot. Obviously, I think I probably got him I don't know. He's a, he, but I'm saying like the stats are pretty close, interestingly, in terms of age, right, and height. Yeah, but also you and Wally are close in age and height. My coach. Right. So it doesn't mean. <laughs> does it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe I should fight your coach. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um. 
I think we. Oh yeah, uh, see, dude, this thumbnail was so fucking awesome. Look at this. <laughs> the love made this. We're just click betting the drama. Uh, we said my issue of Philip DeFranco's reporting. We were just joking about how he doesn't. I was just complaining that I'm not in enough thumbnails and that Hassan's been in more. Mm. And then we go weird and gross. <laughs> 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 My issue with Philip DeFranco's reporting. Did that one get views, by the way, love? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, it did fine, like 65k views. Oh, he, he right. commented. I mean, oh, that's a good title. <laughs> I love the weird and gross. Weird and gross. I'm very proud of that. Wait, how many views did he get? 65k for a two minute clip. I mean, Not, bad. I Not bad. Not bad. I'll take it. <laughs> pretty funny, though. So I think we pretty much closed this episode out let me see yeah it's almost four o'clock uh two mm -hmm. and i know you guys have to head out yeah. i think we talked about every except scooby-doo movie which apparently is super violent let me see this image i'm not gonna put it on the screen it's a cartoon for adults <laughs> is that right a it is a, adult? a, a adult theme there look at this this is Velma. from the trailer so i seeing like her head is cut wide open very graphic and then also the hot uh, Daphne. Daphne is like butt ass naked. <laughs> so weird. Well, she has soap over her private, so you can't like see, but she's Scooby naked. Dooby -doo. <laughs> <laughs> now, people are getting mad because the main character, Velma, they uh, made her Southeast Asian instead of white, uh, which is dumb. Who cares? Like, doesn't matter. Um, I just is thought it was Mindy. In yeah, it's Mindy Kaling is behind it. Oh, well, that's fair. I mean, representing yourself right? yeah and it's obviously who cares i mean it's a cartoon character it <laughs> um but i just we were all discussing it and we were like is it's weird that like all these weird incels are freaking out about the race swap but everybody like it's a scooby-doo show with nudity and like graphic gore it's just like they really care what it, why what the is fuck this do show? they give a yeah. fuck about the the Vel or whatever her name is. Velma. Velma. That's so dumb. Like, it makes me want to spit. In fact, Velma looks like the original character. It's not even like it's a different character. It's just her skin's a little darker. Yeah. That's kind of fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> y'all really are looking pathetic. Uh, Mindy is giving a first look at her HBO Max. Oh, I'm sorry, South show. Asian, not Southeast Asian. I misspoke. People are correct. Um, Velma tells the original story of Velma Dinkley of the Scooby-Doo Gang. Spinoff show is part of HBO's Max to uh, drive to beef up adult animation programming. So there you go, everyone who always wanted to beat off to Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of fantasies going around Scooby-Doo, the women of Scooby-Doo, so. Velma in particular, even though like Daphne is the more traditionally uh, beautiful depicted character, Velma is the sex icon. Right, because you know she's a freak. <laughs> Velma, oh, let's see. Cast of Scooby-Doo original. Let's see. Let's line them up. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's take a look here. So, I let her have her way. There, there's, <laughs> there's ones where she looks hotter than this, where they don't play up like the, they kind of play. I feel like they play it up more in certain iterations of Scooby Doo. Yeah, I think over the years they've uh, leaned into it a little bit more. Wait, hold on. Let, let me before I don't want to Google anything insane. Let me do Velma. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. Velma, sexy. <laughs> Scooby Doo. Here, I want to show you guys some. I, oh my God! Yeah, it's, this is just all. Her genital region was exposed dimly. Velma, Scooby Doo. Here, let's take the sexy out. It had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. Yeah, I mean the actress is pretty. Who played her? Yeah, there the was movie. a meme about her being hot in that. And life. she had like a low cut top with cleavage out. That's so. possessed Velma. What is that? Oh, she got possessed and got <laughs> sexy? Yeah, it's possessed Velma. Oh, shit. <laughs> Nutty. So they're fine. Like, here, obviously, like a beautiful uh, person, a beautiful girl is playing her. I mean, yeah, here she looks a little like she got that, that under boob shadow going on. 
be be careful scrolling through Google Images. Velma. I'm telling you right now. It's there's just Scooby Doo. Of... It just says Scooby Doo Velma. I'm just saying. There's a lot. I did sexy first, and that was not good. Oh, yeah. I just did hot, and that wasn't good. I yeah, let her have her way. Let me see. Yeah, I can see. She got like that, you know, nerdy. She got freckles. People are into that. Mm-hmm. 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 Let's see. <laughs> Yeah. Is anybody going to be watching this show? Oh, see, like, now here anybody? she got... Now, this is what I'm talking about. You know? She has nice legs. <laughs> Her genital region was exposed dimly. <laughs> All right, I should stop scrolling now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't feel deep. Well, that's the show, guys. I uh, hope you had fun today. Covered a lot of ground, didn't we, eh? It's been a whole journey. It has. Um, next Monday. What's happening? Return of Olivia. Mm. Today she talking. I have bad news for her. Oh, I just saw my phone. Pete Davidson leaves SNL. Oh. He's too big for that show. Mm. Rip. Damn, tragic. That's crazy, bro. That's nuts, dude. Anyway, Olivia's back next week. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, thank you to all everyone who gifted. Thank you everyone who uh, donated. Mega awesome nerd. Damn, stop giving us all your money. We live in a beautiful timeline. We got this Velma show, Super Saiyan Shaggy, mm-hmm. and now Ugly Sonic is back. What a time to be alive. Did they bring on Ugly Sonic? I saw something about that. So it's a gag in, I guess, there's a, is it the, the Rescue Rangers like movie that's coming out? It's, uh, I forget the name of it. Chippendale like Rescue a, Rangers? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... I guess they they go to like a Comic Con convention at some point, and the ugly Sonic is there, like like how like a B washed up celebrity like is always signing things. That's at, fun. Uh, which it's a good gag. Uh, Sean said, uh, Sean McKean says, "Can I get a shout out to Gaylord, Michigan? Is that a real? Is that the real name of a town? Yeah, uh, it is. We just is. experienced a tornado that destroyed our entire mainstream. Damn. Thoughts go out <laughs> to Gaylord, Michigan." <laughs> What's funny, you though? The Sean. Uh, yeah. Love that. <laughs> yes, Gaylord, Michigan is a real place. Uh, Gaylord used to be a fairly common surname, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So who's um, gay? When I was a kid, I thought that was the funniest fucking thing, man. I, yeah. Gaylord. I, there was a I kid in my middle school whose middle funny. name it's was hilarious. Gaylord. How is that a name? Gaylord. Like, uh, meet the parent, parents. Gay, well, Gaylord back, father. back, back in the day, gay meant, you know, Mary. All right. Right. I think they. I don't think they use gay as a as a word. To I believe that's a twentieth century yeah, thing so of gay becoming. All of a sudden, you got this surname. You're like, hey, he's a happy guy. <laughs> then you you know, turn to the century, gay lord. In that he's the gay? lord of all gays, Hila. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, to really take that in. Yeah, like I was saying, there, I, I, there was a kid. In my middle school, whose middle name was Gaylord, and people found out. Brutal. And this was in this was in like 1998, 1999 in middle school. Long time. When, when things were n- not nearly as woke as they are today, and mm-hmm. uh, as you can imagine, that poor kid uh, got Damn. teased a lot. That's even his middle name. It wasn't even like one of the major names. Uh, Gaylord is a name from f- Norman French origin. It means literally joyful or high spirited. Sure, yeah. Gaylord, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of a dope name, I think, like if it didn't have the the modern day connotation. <laughs> Some somebody just donated five British pounds and said, I have a great name. His name is J Lord. <laughs> J Lord. <laughs> Slow clap. <laughs> um there's a live animation Scooby Doo show on YouTube that's being funded on Kickstarter? What? Uh, that's like unofficial? That's gonna get shut down. I don't know. That's what he said. He just said episode one is out now. Anyway, thank you guys. Wow, so many generous people in the audience with the with the gifted subs. So nice. Uh, thank you guys so much. Well, I hope everyone has a, a great weekend. We will be back on Monday as usual mm-hmm. um, with Olivia. We got some fun goofs planned. Someone said, check Brittany Broski's socials. What happened? Brittany 
Broski. Let's see. <sighs> Let's see. Let me guess. Nothing's there. Why did her account not come up? She has like 20 stories, so give me Somebody, uh, Mr. Poop gave me five bucks. She said, please split this between Shredder and Alfredo. I will do that for you. <laughs> Thank you. Kind soul. Thank you, kind soul. All right. Um, I am winding down. Do you see anything, Dan, on uh, a brief glance? No. Uh, her most recent tweet is just a goofy gif. I'm there it is. What's going on? Guys, have a great week, and we'll see you on Monday. Elo, congratulations on that first pitch. That was that was something. Yeah. Very, impressive. Very impressive. Very impressive. Absolutely. All right, guys, see you Monday. Have a great weekend. Ta-ta. I let her have her way. She'll see the best podcast in the world. Take it from me, JC. Over chair, HB baby. We podcast now. You're watching next to the three. Three, three. You're watching next to the three, 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 three. You're watching next to the three, 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 three. You're watching next to the three, 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 three.